Chasing the Racing, powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 146. Um, we're Jesus. delighted to be joined by the third co-host. And in <laughs> fact, I'm joined by a pair of uh, Fast Bikes columnists. Uh, and uh, welcome back to the podcast, Christian. In. Cheers How's... for having me again for the, is it six? I don't know. It's a losing, sure losing count. I think it is. I tell you what. You're, um, you're part of the infrastructure now. So I feel it. Part, they, <laughs> for, the <laughs> second, for the second podcast in a row, Dom turns up in a pair of sunglasses. Is, is this the new look, Dom? It's, it's the hangover. It's definitely the hangover. It's simple as that, Chrissy. It's simple as that. There you go. Straight away, you oh, did ask what's up with the glasses. Straight I did. Off the bat. I did. There we go. But we're going to talk about that later in the pod. Let's just don't get the crack. Are you going to keep me hanging? I don't, I don't, I don't. See, I've got an inkling anyway. Go on then. Well, I heard we were going to do this pod, weren't we, a few weeks back, and then we couldn't because you were uh, otherwise, I don't know, engaged with something else. Engaged with something else, yeah. yeah. Correct. Pretty much, yeah. So um, did you actually tell them what? I ch- uh, no details, but just... Nah. Well, right. Well, basically, I'm bollocks to it here, right? So... Oh, wow. <laughs> Full Terminator. Full Terminator, that, isn't it? You want my clothes and no. your motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! Absolutely love it. So, no, um, right. Let me let me just start off straight away that um, I've passed all medical tests. I'm going back to work next week, which is great. But um, I sustained. Nice word there, sustained. Jeez, I'm gonna put them back on. It's bloody bright. I'll be walking around looking like. Well, you a drove here in them, and a, it's pitch black. I, I thought know, that's I impressive. Know. I look like a budget Roy Orbison here. There you go. <laughs> uh, no, so basically, um, got a double skull fracture on there. So top side of me um, eye socket, I've got a notch out underneath my eyebrow there, to mm-hmm. where they stitched it back together. Uh, bottom side's broken three bits. Um, they've reconstructed both my eyelids, top and bottom. And um, actually, on the medical report, it said globe exposure, meaning like my eyelid was just gone up and down. But by, <laughs> by very, very, very lucky, my eye was at the time, I had to be like, um, sit in silence, which is a shock. <laughs> How do you manage that? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. They were actually thinking about fitting the catheter to think they're going to extract the piss that I talk somehow. <laughs> I bet so, you sat going, <laughs> <laughs> mate, honestly, I didn't want to say a fucking thing. Like, my head, well, Basically, because when you have a skull fracture, um, your brain swells and it just pushes on your brain. And I know brain surgeons have actually confirmed that I have a brain. I want that everyone to hear and confirm. I'm going to bring in the bit of paper and everything. I have a brain. It's a shock. So I just, Most so, people listening to this probably think it's a motorbike accident. No. So unfortunately, um, I <laughs> basically... Storm damage tree. There's been a few storms going mm-hmm. all over the place, and um, I was cutting a, a field boundary tree. And what they used to do back in the day is um, you had planting sticks, so you had to put a young sapling next to a stake. They use wood now, but back in the day they used to use metal. So the tree, they normally had to remove these stakes. But what's happened is the tree's grown round the stake, so the tree wasn't that old, really. You know, it was quite a short, stumpy thing. <laughs> and um, I've sunk the saw in now. I have to get like a diagram for Grace to put it out on there. So the end of the end of every chainsaw bar is like the kickback zone. I was just now, about to say, I, I was going to guess this is some kind of kickback injury. So I got full, <clears throat> full kickback and the saw cut, like went through my helmet and cut in the, into my head. Because it grabbed the metal thing. So it literally kissed it just enough. So it was just, it's like, if I hit the bit of metal square on in the middle of the bar, the saw would have just bounced the ones, blunt the chain. I've done it millions of times. I've cut all sorts. I've actually cut like 50 cal bullets working mm. on military bases and stuff like that. And I've had, everyone's had near misses at work and stuff. But unfortunately this time, the end of the bar is just kissed the metal absolutely on the sweet spot. And the lad, um, <laughs> the <laughs> I owe him a fair few drinks, who uh, took me to hospital. And he took, he went and showed me the bit of metal on photo after, and I just kissed it enough to give full inertia back over, and it just went straight up over. And because I'm a proper northern hard bastard, I didn't even knock me out, but it was mental. So how, because I, I don't know a lot about chainsaws, but I've used a few working with my mate. How did it not knock it off with the kickback 
um, handle because you have one on the top, don't you? Because where my hands were, the, the chain brake was engaged, but every chain speed on any chainsaw is 120 mile an hour. But engine torque carries that through kind of thing. So when it's come up over, what's happened is all that impact, because you've got individual metal teeth mm -hmm. on it, sheer inertia cut through me so helmet the chain had stopped though. the chain was stopped dead but just hit you that Literally, hard essentially right. i got battered with a, a sword with little daggers on them individually and it cut through me helmet and it cut through me skull and it crunched the rest so all my teeth are loose and everything but so what mate, we're saying is you're proper lucky because you make you incredibly, no, mate, incredibly no, 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 lucky incredibly lucky that i'm so like because <clears throat> it was proper proper gone through my skull like it was really really close and it's a uh, but the fact that i've kept my eyesight you know what i mean it's like yet again i'm gonna That's show amazing. it it's now the fact that like the surgeons have done an amer like an amazing job i've been up and down to see in robinson and it's like the, the eye was shut and like the like all the swellings coming down on that side i haven't seen it since last week it's came on it's a hell of a lot better that's it and like i've, I've been going for like medical report, like so they've signed mm -hmm. me off to go back to work. I've been for my eye tests, for my ACU license, and everything. And that's all right, is it? Yeah, mate, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's like uh, there's a lad like a work with, still work with, called Henderson. <laughs> he um he was doing tours in Northern Ireland during the troubles, and he got a two pence launched into his eye. He's blind in one eye. You think two pence? And you think Jesus wept? I've just had. I've just literally eaten a chainsaw, and it's just <laughs> gone. But it's like the mad thing is, everyone will be going, "Oh, you've done something wrong." It's like I, obviously the incidents happened, but if I was in that exact same spot again, I would have done the exact same thing. There was mm -hmm. literally a foreign object, a bit of metal for God's sake, hidden in the tree, and I've just hit it wrong. I've been on a chainsaw since I was fourteen. I've rolled the dice enough, and I've had near misses, and like I wear all the protective gear, but you just get caught out. Yeah, you know just I mean? one of them. Literally just one of those. And I'm not bitter about it. I'm not twisted far from it. I'm literally the polar opposite. I'm I'm so lucky. Like, you're sitting there, like, mm -hmm. and you just sat there. You said, you're lucky. I'm fully aware how lucky I am. I'll tell you what, I, when I was allowed up on my feet and going around the hospital, I went, look, I need to stand up. And I'm going around looking like Captain Bugwash, like fully bandaged up and everything like that. I went, fuck it, I'm going to go to WH Smith. So I went, I'd, I'm just fed up with drinking water. So I bought me cellar, a can, a can of rich energy. I was going to say, come on, <laughs> brand ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you managed to find one. I don't know. Yeah, the, the, the shelves were stacked in the Darlington Hospital. No, so anyway, I went and got a, a bottle of pop and I went, I went fuck it, I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. And I bought this lottery ticket and I held it in my hand. I went, even I'm taking the piss. I've used all my luck up here. You know what I mean? I figured I'm never going to win the lottery. But you know what? I, I don't get like, I'm, I have, I'm so, so lucky. And without getting too, like, too into it kind of thing. But I tell you what, a, few, a fair few nights in hospital does change you. Like, we've all, Jesus, man, we race motorcycles. We've all been in the hospital. But I tell you what, there was one night, you know, I was across from there, old Jimmy. And Jimmy, bless him, couldn't say a word, nothing. And he was just, he was an incredibly ill man. And one night they came in and they didn't stop working on him till five in the morning. Unfortunately, Jimmy didn't make it. And, you know, I'm lying there, bandaged up in total silence going, you know what? It's not so bad. It's No, no, no. Like, honestly, at no point did I think at all this. You know, the first two days I went, because I, I couldn't see. And But when I hit, like, when the saw hit me in the head, I hit a main artery going over me head and the fucking blood was unreal but I literally because I didn't knock out because yet again I'm a northern hard bastard did it hurt I, mean? I tell you what I didn't feel it for days like literally the impact was that much adrenaline going through mm. and like the mad thing is so like it hit me and it just it, it was like glass just I went oh and blood and then my brain just both eyes went out and I could feel blood running down and like um, I pulled my hoodie up under my chin just held me hoodie like some some stand there with me fucking tits out. <laughs> he just chucked the kit like he literally just went through me pockets, got me keys, just chucked me in. I I I owe that man so many beers. Do you know a lot of the times you've told us you're like in the middle of nowhere by yourself. I guess you're lucky that Eve. I know you're lucky in lots of ways, but lucky in the fact that someone was close by. Oh as well, God, oh, that's... if you were by yourself, you'd be an absolute snooker, wouldn't you? Oh, hundred percent. It's just like the oh, my car, like because he chucked me in my own truck, man, and uh... in the new truck. Yeah, the new, the two grand, the two grand weapon. I've just there. been admiring the new truck. Oh, it's, it's Chrissy's a, laughing. I love it. Oh no, it's got a long wind. I'll tell you off air. So we're yes. gonna, it's it's one of those. Uh, we'll probably bring the story up after the 
the law case has dropped. <laughs> it's got layers, mate. I'm telling you, it's got. I'm gonna put my sunglasses back on. Jesus, wept. Anyway, there you go. Anyway, well, we're, 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 <laughs> no, but anyway, speaking for everyone, yeah, yeah. We're, we're very pleased that you've pulled through and that uh, it's not, obviously it is serious, but it's not too serious. Oh, God, no, like, and, I'm, um, I'm very, very lucky. lucky, very, very, very lucky. And it's like, the important thing is, it's like, if, you know, when I hit the floor, mm-hmm. it's made me more hungry. This injury's made me more mm-hmm. hungry. You know, if I'm literally, I literally, I was on the floor, couldn't see a thing going, that's, that's... That's racing over. Not, oh, fuck, am I going to live through this or anything like that? They're like, blood's pissing on me. I literally hit the floor and went, that's a TT, gone. Literally like that. I'm not, even, I'm not even making that up for the sake of the podcast. I literally hit the floor and went, TT's gone. And my eyesight's gone. Bikes are gone. Everything's gone. And I would like, like I say, a few ho- days in the hospital, I lay there and went, all I've done is fucking work to pay to go racing uh-huh. but then all I've done is work and then you flick it like I haven't I didn't look at my phone for days but then I've, I'm recently back on my phone now and everything like that and everyone's out and testing Spain doing chin ups and push ups and getting ready and you're thinking you know what I've done I've done too much work but then that's the counter evil of racing isn't it you need money to go racing but I need it's proper fired me up yeah, like proper fired me up to get back on a bike and I, I'm desperate for it. And like, the good thing is I'm, I'm back to work next week. I've been jumping and jolting and everything to try and like, see how me brick, like how this is all going. But I've been getting x-rays and like I say, I've been work, like working with Ian Robinson at ITRM and he has pulled out all the stops and like extra therapy and trying this and, and how diet is such an important thing for recovery. Mm-hmm. And that this has really come to light with us. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'm proper... Keeping an eye on, pardon the pun, an eye on the job. You know what I mean? It's like, tell you, it's a wrong time to be a Geordie with a wrong uh, with an eye. Aye, aye. And I'm like, look, will you fucking drop it? And they're like, aye. I'm like, oh, fuck off, will you? Jesus, sweat, man. <laughs> <laughs> wrong time to be a Geordie. Uh, so anyway, it, anyway, yeah, didn't watch a little GP. Yeah, speak, <laughs> speaking of which, right, the, I, I was, I'm very keen to get you on the podcast right away after seeing your, your inspired uh, gambling decisions after the first round of the MotoGP. Now, got a quick story for you. We had a little um, competition running on the Chasing the Race and o- across all platforms. You had to predict the podium for the first MotoGP uh-huh. race and you won a Pirelli cap. Not, well, I had about 120 entries and I don't, th- I think Bastini, one person had Bastinini third. Nobody had him first or second. So one person had him on the podium out of 120. And he obviously went and won the race. So just just goes to show how unpredictable MotoGP. Nobody got close to predicting the top three. Not remotely. But uh, I seen you stuck a little cheeky 33 to 1 on. Yeah, I, I just like... I'd Please been... tell us you stuck 100 quid on. <laughs> no, I definitely didn't. I wish I had... It's one of them, innit? You always... I, to be fair, I bet on half the field, so it's not that good. <laughs> no, um, like, obviously, Bastianini winning the first MotoGP was amazing, but I'd, he'd had such a good... There's a couple of races last year when he'd shown some amazing form, and he tested well at one of the rounds, and then, obviously, Qatar's such a... Has been, last year with Jorge Martin, doing so well on a, on a Ducati. Mm. Zarka has always gone there, well there. Those sort of people. I just thought, do you know what? I think he can, if he got out front and did well, and I put it on quite early, so I got long odds on him. I actually had Binder on as well as a, for a podium, so I got both of them. And I did, I had Paul on, but I cashed out for a podium before the round. So I would have had the, I would have had all three, but I flipping didn't. How much would that have been with the money you put on? How much? <laughs> Do you just stick a couple of quid on yeah, this just, one? Yeah, I only play at it. I yeah. only play oh, at I, it. Yeah. But if you had the third man, what would he have won? Because you... Oh, well, it would have won. added up. Even if you just put a quid on it, it would have been a no, few really. hundred quid just for... Still just for, for a bit but of I crack, didn't. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I'm, a, I'm a long odds sort of gambler. Not, I'm not even a gambler. That's not true. But, you know, like, I do it just so that... Like, <laughs> I'm not... I'm not <laughs> I promise. I promise. I'm <laughs> Denial's the first stage. <laughs> and I've, I've got a problem. I bet on Anaya Bastianini. <laughs> 33 to 1. <laughs> yeah, I've got problems. Now, um, is, <laughs> I just I just actually find that it, I, I really enjoy watching the racing more, even if it's like a quid or two quid. You've got skin in the game. Yeah, just a bit of summer. And I, actually, the Moto 3 is probably the most interesting because Moto 2 I find a little bit duller because it tends to be pretty set out. You can tell more or less who's going to finish where, but Moto 3 can be such a such a lottery. So... Yeah, I really enjoy doing the most. Do you stick them ones. on for all three classes as well? Yeah, and Class. qualifying and stuff. Have like you that. have you joined our chasing the race in a fantasy league? On... No, you did send me the link, but yeah, I but promoting gambling now. So yeah, don't be... yeah sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, did you get many? Uh, 
Sign yeah, up. I think there's about 200 in our league. That's sweet. So, uh, and out of... So people have joined after the first round, so there's loads of people on zero. So can I still join after the first round? Yeah, But yeah. I start with zero? You start with zero. Oh. But what what is funny, so I think we've got about 200 in the league, about 150... Uh, started before round one and like obviously like I feel like I'm you know talk about racing every week sort of know a little bit I'm 137th out of 150 <laughs> so who did you pick? Peko yeah Zarko uh, I can't even remember they were, they Vi- were good Vinales good yeah, Vignal- Vinales. I had Vinales. Yeah, was that, is he like really cheap or something? Yeah, well, you you have two gold riders and two silver riders in the manufacturer. My manufacturer is Suzuki, which I was oh, after seeing play. the top yeah. speeds. I was well happy with that. They've made a huge. To be fair, after testing, I was chuffed a bit. Like after free practice, I was chuffed a bit with that. But the Suzuki lads, they did okay, but nothing special. But um, yeah, I. I'll keep it updated like throughout the year because uh, on who's doing what because uh, obviously there'll have been a few people that are doing very well. I tell you what, I was over the moon with you know they did like the little press launch kind of thing. You know when they were saying who's going to be world champion, you have to write your answer mm-hmm. on. F- John Muir has gone. Is it Jean Muir? Joanne. Uh, Joanne. Joanne. Even they are. He's gone up even further because he just. I think it was one of the only people that didn't write his own name. I think, he went, I think he wrote Marquez or something like oh, that. Oh, did he? I think he did. He, to be fair, the thing I've seen... I remember much, him not writing his own Pretty much, pretty much all much of them said, said Acosta. Else. And so everyone said Foggia. Yeah. Pretty much everyone said Foggia for Moto3. Pretty much everyone said Acosta for Moto2. Hmm. But then obviously they they were asking themselves. So the, the MotoGP is a hard one. The MotoGP one, the one I've seen, everyone was predicting, like, say, Peco, Quattro, or depending on which manufacturers they were, they were saying, mm-hmm. like, the best person of their manufacturer. And then it got to the end, and then Fabio was like, me. <laughs> Fabio was the only one that in the video I seen Fabio was the only one that was backing himself but and they, oh, were the no, that, like, they the... had the hardest time didn't they like Yamaha's was struggling yeah they had big time because yeah, he's wanting f- to, he was wanting to go somewhere else didn't he the, Fabio well, was the that thing like is, earlier on in this season the thing is like after last year I winter. think Fabio made the bike look reasonable and obviously he did a great job last year but with that, if you take him out of the equation last yeah, year Yamaha they were nowhere. absolutely screwed mm-hmm. and then yeah. the, everyone else has made another jump and they're really in the shit really aren't they then? here's a question um, for, yeah this is how bad I am with names um, who won it <laughs> give me the <laughs> name Bastianini Bastian. now you know Zarco yeah. where did Zarco first make his name was it not uh, Qatar you know what I mean? The first, last, yeah, was, really strong there last very, year. On the Tech 3 first, Yamaha. Tech 3 Yamaha, he led and then took the front at turn two or three, I think three, it was. The left. first left under. Yeah. But for me, that's where Zarko really came alive and went, he's a little GP uh-huh. rider. You know, for someone who doesn't keep their finger on the pulse. And it's I that kind of didn't system. catch the start. I, th- I seen. I think he finished about eighth, but... On like what really early on in the race, Arco was like 20, 20th or twenty first. I don't know if he got like either ran wide or ran off or something. Uh, but yeah, I was expecting a bit more from him. Really, I was. But the the whole MotoGP field is so stacked that it's 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 such an impressive championship. Now I think in the last three or four years they've they've made it so all the teams now are so competitive. I mean, the the Grassini team that that won the race is basically the the fourth Ducati team. You know, mm. on the fourth rate, not fourth rate equipment, but you know, like that shows how. Well, all the other ones are in factory bikes, but to be fair, that they're saying they were saying, weren't they, that maybe that's the problem. So that all the other ones have got like new bikes yeah. that aren't as developed, and therefore they're the, actually struggling with it. The, there was a time when Yamaha's did that, and when Rossi and Vignales, and the satellite team was better. Yeah, and uh, it was more Bedelli and Quattro were yeah. first and second, yeah. and then so yeah. Sometimes t- that to be fair, that's actually a good point in racing in general. A lot of the times, people think it would be great to be uh, like a proper manufacturer, like a uh, factory team. Mm-hmm. But the downside, people don't often talk about the downside is sometimes you're like happy with the settings you've got, and then the factory have like developed something new, and you're like really don't want to run it, but mm-hmm. you then forced to run it um and so- the, the hard thing is is probably the factories are probably right in terms of what they bring out probably is better but it, everything takes a time to develop it but it so it might not be better at that moment but you have to have progression so they have to keep bringing something out mm. and then obviously if you're a factory rider you would kick off if you didn't get the new stuff mm. but then you kick off when it's not mm. as good straight away yeah. I've, so I've it's heard, a proper um, hard hard one to sort of like I heard Lee, Lee Johnson on a podcast the other day talking about this and he was saying how 
when he was at Honda, he kind of dreamt of always racing for Honda. And obviously, it's well uh, documented. It didn't work out from there. But he was he was actually saying where he is at the moment. He feels is an advantage because because the they choose which manufacturer and mm-hmm. whatever the like customer uh, to customer team. They look at the man and say the they think the BMW is the best bike. They go and have the BMW. They look in the Super Sport. They think Yamaha. They go and buy the Yamaha in the Super Light. They look at all the manufacturers. They think the Aprilia is going to be in the buy the Aprilia. They're not limited to anything. Mm-hmm. So they, there's sorry, have you got the cheddar? Pros, pros and cons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. There's pros and cons. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. But yeah, the, the the GPS this weekend just shows how close everyone is. That Suzuki's made a big step. Yeah. Aprilia looks like they've made a big step. I've always been hard up. On Alicia Spargo, but I'm I'm warming <laughs> to him a little bit. To be fair, mm-hmm. I am warming warming to him a little bit, and like he beat Vinales, didn't he? Yeah, smashed him. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I mean. And he's, but Mavs, he's... Mavs is just a strange Mav. one, isn't he? You know, like he, again, he had the first half of the race off. You know, he didn't even. I, but I was watching his progress, and he did come through. Mm-hmm. But that's what he always used to do anyway. He would just mm. he comes around the first lap last. It doesn't matter where he qualifies. He comes around lap one in the bottom three. Every single time, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is with his first laps. I don't know if he's, well, I just don't know. There's not even any point guessing because I just don't know what goes on. Yeah. Have you, have you, do you follow Alisha on Instagram? Who? Alisha Spargo. No. Oh, mate, he's got, he's got like the life of Riley. Oh, he loves it. He like, loves he's, it. He's, he's, he has got so much like money and the lifestyle. Yeah. It, so he lives in Andorra. Was this pre racing? No no no, 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 from racing. Money. <clears throat> so he's no, made no, no, money, I don't think, Well, I don't, I don't know what... He must have come from an all right thing because everyone in racing is, has yeah, a certain amount, but that. he's certainly got more money now than I think he ever did. So if, <laughs> if you... Go, he, doc, he puts everything, like... He's very public with his private life, yeah, I'd is, say. Yeah. But if you go on his Instagram, he's, he does a, a tour. And imagine, like, the best uh, sort of... Oh, the garage. garage that just you can just imagine. Insane. A bike for every occasion. Bike? All of his, all of his leathers, hang, uh-huh. all of his helmets. It's like a mu- museum, basically. And he's, he's got like some pretty impressive bikes. So anyone that goes on his Insta, he's got like some of his Aprilia MotoGP bikes. He's got his some of the CRT bikes. He's got some of the earlier day bikes. He's and he's got all the cars. He's got all the flash cars and like. I'm into it's, bicycles. He's got that many bicycles. You couldn't believe. It's motorhome, so it's a, like an Arctic, and then you go in, and it is honestly a house on wheels. Yeah, he does a walk round of this of it's this ridiculous. articulated motor. It makes oh, this trailer thing. look I, a little bit, yeah, second rate. Which mm. I always like this trailer. Oh, yeah. it, oh it says follow back. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> what a lovely lad. Uh, he's, um, yeah, he's yeah. So he so he was impressive. So Aprilia and Suzuki made a really big step. Yeah. Um, Jesus, was, his wife. <laughs> It was actually quite. It was quite nice to see that Ducati didn't dominate mm. because preseason testing actually it looked like it might be a Ducati show because obviously they got more bikes on the grid than anyone else, so it could turn into a one manufacturer show. But it looks like it's going to be wide open. It really does. And also KTM don't uh, traditionally they don't do too well at Qatar, nah. so mm-hmm. to see uh, Brad up in second place and looking reasonably strong. And Miguel had pace as well. To be fair, decent. Yeah, it sort of sets KTM up strong yeah, for the season as big well. Time. Uh, so yeah, in terms of like the big. The big movers, you would say, sort of Suzuki, Aprilia, the big uh, slopers, Yamaha, yeah. and everything else. But it's very unpredictable. And uh, you, you mentioned you're a, you're a long a long range gambler. Uh, what's what's your predictions for the championship? <laughs> I had um, I had Jorge Martin on as as um, as one, but my plan actually was that he was going to win the first race, and I was going to cash out. Right, so it didn't work because he crashed himself. So yeah. I did. I can't cash out now because I'll be. Peko took him out. To be fair, yeah. Who do you want to win it? That's a good question. Ru- you know what is it? Um, heart over your head, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Who do you want for it to win? I don't know. I would like. I'm, I'm happy to see Marquez coming back to. Yeah. More of what we know and love of Mark Marquez. Yeah. Um, that's great, but I don't necessarily want him to win. I'm still not. A big Marquez lover. Mm. Tell you what, I was um, if you'd said before that race, uh, what's the chances of Paul beating Marquez? I, w- I would have thought that was very unlikely. Yeah. yeah. So, so Honda. Sorry, would I haven't mentioned Honda have made a big step because in the past there Marquez has always made it work, but there's only well a lot of the time there's only Marquez that can mm-hmm. make it work, and you'll see the others like crashed and whatever. So to see Paul so strong, that sort of bodes well. Yeah, apparently him. that new Honda, from what Paul was saying, it's, it's a lot more rideable, and he doesn't feel like he's going to crash it every time he gets on it, which is better. And actually. Paul was away with it at the beginning. And then if, in his post-race interview, he said about how they, they, everyone was having fuel issues. 
So obviously the one of the easiest ways that they can limit speeds, because obviously now the bikes are so ridiculously fast, mm. is to give them less and less fuel. Because the less fuel you throw in, obviously the less power they can put out for 40 minutes or whatever it yeah. is. So everyone was obviously on the limit for fuel. And Paul went off and he said in his post-race interview that the plan wasn't to go off and go at the front because of these fuel issues. But he did go off and go at the front, mm. and but sort of couldn't rein himself in. And then actually, if you look on the um, on the replays, as one of the things they always do a mapping dashboard, but there was it's it said on his dash about he needs to change map, and that's when he got caught very very quickly. Yes. So it could be that he was having too much power and he was using too much fuel, and then it his bike might have just got a bit slower. That, I, don't I don't know if that's true, but that's how it sounded to me when he was doing his post race interview that he had sort of had to turn it down a little bit. I don't think it was actually to do with the <clears throat> tactics. I think he's just seen the fuel prices at the pub. So just... <laughs> one seventy. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you been he's waiting started, for that? He started <laughs> short <shifting. laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't even get started on that. Oh, we're going to go down that rabbit hole now. Jesus, wait, we are not on the show. We are not going on the road anymore, Chris. <laughs> I know. If any, we are so grateful that Chris is taking the time to come to us because we can't afford the show anymore. Wait for the invoice. Wait for the expenses invoice. Jeez, I bet. Jesus, wait, man. One pound ninety nine. Nine down country, one pound eighty nine. I think what it was the f- two. Th- the most expensive one was in Chelsea. I think it was two thirty. I think at the moment. By the time this podcast goes out, it'll probably we'll be in there. Yeah, no. <laughs> they'll be thinking just two thirty. No, it's completely non racing related. But I also changed my like your energy thing. I got my new bill for that the other day, and that made me nearly cry. Yeah, a few people have mentioned that. It's like uh, Do you want some firewood. I can get you any firewood. Well, I I bit I have got a log burner at home, and it the gas does not get turned I'm on. I'm very fortunate. I'm sponsored by Dunsley Heat, which is uh, one of the best uh, multi fuel stoves around. Smooth, yes. smooth. Um, yeah. But yeah, I know they're having a an, a great time at the moment because everyone wants now a wood burning stove. But it's funny, isn't it? Like how things change. So obviously, we were having what six months ago, we were having this like eco revolution. And they were going to bin all wood burning stoves and this, that, and the yep. other. And it was completely like, oh, that's terrible and puts all this stuff in the air. And now every man and his dog wants a wood burning stove. Of course, mm. they do, because Putin's about to put missiles in the air. That's the problem. Well, it could, um, I tell you what, it could be good for your little business, your little side business. Oh, my side hustle. Side business. What's your side hustle? hustle? I sell firewood. Oh, you're going to sell it to me? I thought you just said you want some firewood. <laughs> well, no, yeah, I was going to. The amount of hats <laughs> you've sold me, mate. The amount of hats you oh, sold did me. You, you can have hats? some. Fa- I did, mate. I you know modeled what I mean? those hats beautifully, I, mate. You're literally the poster boy for my hats. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like that. Do not invoice me for that. <laughs> one, person, <laughs> one person licked one from the London show. <laughs> Bass, you, mate, I was wounded. So, but in the same breath, it's a bit of a double-sided compliment. Someone's stolen me. Probably wiped their ass on it. To be fair, let's face it. You know what I mean? But it's fine. Someone nicked one of me hats. And I think these lot were like, Dominic, will you shut up for like two days straight? I'm like, can't believe someone's that nicked. That could be your slogan though. My, my hats are good enough to nick. What one person, some southerner, is walking around smug. With a warm head. The boys don't even know who, like, you know what I mean? They've just turned up and just gone, look, I just, I'm here for the free pens. And oh, look, there's a hat. I'll take that. I was wounded. Absolutely <laughs> wounded. At the, at the London show? Aye. Aye. Southerners. It was class. It was if class you're listening crack, to this, you're a prick. <laughs> uh, did you see any of the crack from that? I saw some of the racing. It did look pretty yeah, hectic it was, and it was good was fun. Yeah, Especially yeah. the little jumpers. The little jump always been in there no nah. i know one year there was a berm wasn't there yeah that was got... there a berm this year no nah. it was it, it, the thing is it, it, nah the berm needed to be the berm needs to come back but they said because of budget you know what i mean the, well, they didn't did they not have last year's berm what, what happened to last year's berm? <laughs> i think it was i think it was two years ago safety, that, think, to be fair no it wasn't i think it was budget are you sure i think boasty was saying i'm putting words in people's mouths but i'm gonna say budget i'm gonna say <laughs> health and safety i think <laughs> what's your view <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work out the cost difference between a ramp and a berm. To be fair, uh, a lot less timber. It did look, it did no, look amazing, though. Massive. It did look mint. It was. T- it- I tell, you, you would. I tell you what. The reason you don't get invited because you'd be, you'd smoke everyone. That's a problem. No, you, the Neves were there, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, that's their bread and butter. Have you ever seen them two going round a short track? T- Tim was going round on this Indian thing. Was it? It's no CCM. Uh, I can't remember. I'll tell you what, the good thing is we are we are not like governed to anyone and we can say what we want on this show. CCM did not give Tim Neve a fucking penny to do that display thing. That's right. I'll tell you what, Tim Neve single handedly must have sold a thousand bikes for what he was doing on that. I did see a video of him and it was amazing. What like. he, it was literally just he was just drifting the whole thing around and around and around. And CCM did not give him a single penny. Well, the now, first time I saw both of them two riding was was short track meeting which was out in the super prestigio thing which oh. 
and they don't do that anymore. He was there was there was an American lad who doesn't race anymore because he got injured. But there was only I can't remember if it was Tim or Tom. One of them was pretty much on Marquez pace. And Marquez, if you've ever seen, is probably one of the best in the world at short track. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I think Tim was slightly better than Tom. So right. when when they jumped across, Tom jumped across the road racing one year before Tim. Right. So Tom's always been like like sort of moved on, then Tim uh-huh. filled in, and then t- and they've kind of like... But it was incredible. Just, yeah. I just but want, the, I just want to say it was incredible. I've been down yeah. to Greenfields when they've both been out, and the, yeah, this is mega impressive. Have, now, you ever, have you ever done that? We all suit them out with career and everything like that. Have you ever done flat track? And um, um like at a race I had a go. No, never, never at a race meet. I spent ages once converting a motocross bike into one, so I could have it as both. Yeah. And then I rode it once because that's just that was just because the track was too far for me. You know, like yeah. that was like three hours for me to get to a track. And then to be fair, you just ride around in circles, and it looks mint, though. It does look mint, hmm. but it was too closed of a skill loop for me to get into. Yeah. Sure. Yes. If you know what I mean, like yeah, I yeah. prefer my motocross because at least then I can turn in the other direction and do jumps and. Yeah, like, no, there's a bit no, more exactly to it. What mean. Yeah. Exactly what I mean. Well, but to... it's like it's such a you you watch it and you think it's easy because it's such a close. You just, you watch it and you go, oh yeah, of course I could do that. But yeah. then you actually try it. A bit like anything that you see someone do. If if you watch someone who's good at something, they make it look so easy, don't you? Mm-hmm. And then when you actually have a go, you're like, ah. Yeah, yeah, it's really not. Point. Now, I was uh, speaking just before about the extortionate fuel prices. Uh, it's, something's <laughs> just depression. popped up. Yeah, something's just popped up on, <laughs> oh, no. the, on oh, yeah. Bike Sport News uh, about uh, Moto E. Now, I've never ever followed it. I don't. If uh, well, do you know other than is Bradley Smith still in it? Yeah. Other than do you, so, do you follow it? I do because Brad's in it. Cause right. I, get on I was going to well say, do, Brad and... do you, could you name like a few of the riders type of thing that are in it? I know his teammates, Canopy. Right. Because I was commenting before about how many sponsors he's got in his helmet. Right. Go on, then. How many has he got? Like, a, lot, a lot more than Brad. Rant? I said, that's just no good. I says, come on, Brad, what are you doing? You need some more helmet sponsors. <laughs> but um, anyway, Mo- Mo- you've just had a three-day test at Hareth. What's a limit? Sorry, now, going back. Sorry. What's a limit then? In your opinion, you know, like getting out, like, is it just rammed like an autobiography well, it on is, the side it's, of it? It's naught to Glen Owen, isn't it, on hotels, <laughs> on, on helmet sponsors? You know, like, that's the... Alistair Seeley's a close second, to be fair. But Glen- if you see the number of sponsors you can get on a lid... To be it's fair, quite impressive. Glenn makes it work. Like, yeah. it, actually, it blends it work. It, it's like, but it's but like, it's Taylor same. McKenzie used to do quite a clever thing. He did this thing called like squares or something like that. Yeah. So he sold your square for, I don't know, a thousand pound or a hundred pound or, you know, whatever the figure was. Yeah. And you got a, a centimetre by centimetre square yeah. or something like that. Lundy, so you could buy so many. Lundy bought a couple and sent a picture. At the time, his daughter, Emily, was like, I think she was about three. And uh, he had a picture of Emily going like that. So on the back <laughs> of Taylor's, he bought like a couple of squares and had that. Kid with the fingers up. Yeah. Class. <laughs> Um, Class. The I was just going to say, well, yeah, I don't follow it at all. But just in terms of riders that I recognise, uh, Dom- Dominique Agatha was quickest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jordan... Didn't he? Didn't he win the championship last year? Was yes, he Tor- did. Yeah. No, Torres did. Did he? Yeah. So I know, anyone Ag- Agatha won World Super Sport, didn't he? Yeah, but then there was a load of hoo ha. So it, you can look back on it, probably find it on the internet. But it was actually a really good last race, and the two had a coming together. And I'm pretty sure Torres went down. In a clash with Agatha, Agatha therefore won the championship because he crossed the line, but yeah. then got demoted X number of places, which handed Torre the championship. I'm wow. nearly certain. Well, I'm like 50 50. So, Dominic Agatha, Torres, they were first and second. Yeah. And then uh, Nicole Canaper is another one. Uh, Javi Forres, I didn't know he was doing it. Bradley Smith, Bradley's seventh. Um, other than Kevin Manfredi, I used to be teammates with Kevin. He's 12th. M- Maria Herrera. So I think she oh, must be the only female one. What was um, she doing? Forty eight, or was she in the forty nine? She's fifty, but yeah, one forty eight, and then this one forty eight six is the quickest, and then the slowest time, which is fourteenth, is one fifty one. So, so right. I mean, the race, that... the racing is really good because they're really short races. So I think they're like eight laps long. So actually, it's a really, it is good to watch. It's really intense. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite cool to watch, and that I think, and what makes it probably more interesting is they get such, or they did do previously, they got such little practice that you know when people are still almost learning the track and learning 
their bike set up and stuff like that. Like they go out for Super Bowl and people are all over the place because that's the heart. Like they they're just push. Yeah, they just push. They've done the best time they've done all weekend by like two and a half seconds. And you're like, well, how? <laughs> Did they like because have... they only got five laps practice before they got out there? You know, that's all they got. Yeah, it's on Formula One where they've got like the <laughs> I don't watch Formula One, but you know, and they've got the like turbo things on the straights and stuff. Mm-hmm. Do they do similar? No, nah, they don't do any boosts or nothing. Or not no. that I know of. Not yet. No. Nah. Now, in terms of like. The way the world's changing, obviously, the people, you know, there's a big push for like electric vehicles. Uh-huh. Especially, like in this country, is it 2035 or 2030 or something? They're stopping selling cars, aren't Stopping they? selling combustion engine cars, uh-huh. so everything. So, the massive push to, to electric. Um, I actually had a f- uh, go in my friend Dale's um, electric. He's got like a Jag thing, like a four by four thing. It was absolutely mega, like ridiculous. Aren't they the good. fastest things in the world? Unbelievable, yeah, to uh, drive. Dom, but, have you been in an electric car? No, but I'll tell you who changed my opinion. Your father-in-law, Hugh Teasdale. You've got a short lad from Product gone, this Tesla's mint. I'm like, all right, fair enough. These electric cars well, must that, be that, class. De- that depends what story he told you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the other day, my other half was like, oh, I've just been on the phone to me, ma'am. Oh, what's she doing? So they've driven to... Washington Services, which for them is 35 minutes drive to, yeah. charge, the to charge the car up. Because <laughs> to the day after, he had to drive somewhere really far and on trickle charge from home, it wouldn't have got him enough charging. Oh, for God's so sake, So they man. drove basically an hour and 10 minutes, sat in the car for however long to charge it up. On the, There's a supercharger at Washington Services, I think. But don't they... But, don't so the that super... is less cool. That is that not is, good, is it? That's a lot less cool. But they, don't they knack the superchargers, knack the batteries even quicker? I don't know, but... That's what I was told. On the, on the flip side... Like the first time I went in an electric car, one of my a sponsor of mine and a good friend of mine, he's got one of the Tesla S's, which is it's a massive thing. Yeah. Like we drove down to Sheffield and it took us like five hours because we had to stop to charge it up three times. True story. Like that's only a what is it two and a half hour drive normally. It took mm. us double. Um, it only costs you two hundred quid diesel these days. You know, true. <laughs> but we then stopped at some traffic lights and it's got it's got like eco mode, normal mode. And then it's got like insane, and then it's got something like super insane or something like it has that text. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, it actually comes up super it's insane. Not, it's, it's even more. Than, it says it even more than that, and then you press it, and you're like, "Are you sure?" And you like, you go, "Yeah, I'm sure." Honestly, right? So there's fact there was five, might have been six of us in the car. It's a big wagon. It weighs an absolute ton, like a lorry, and yeah. he just we were sat at the lights, and he just booted it. And honestly, it was one of them where your head hit it's the scary. back of the. The headrest, and you couldn't pull your head back forwards. Mm. It accelerated that fast. And you're a strong lad as well. I've never in my life accelerated on anything, in anything, that fast ever. Yeah. And that is a big car. Mm Mm-hmm. It's yeah. It's um, fair play. We then stopped for three hours to charge it up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got to the end of the slip road. And I, think, I think. from that, went, any... <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> like him on, on the telly. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> I think it's law uh, from now that every new build has to have a supercharger <clears throat> built in, like a charging point for the car. So I think it, it anyway. It is massively getting pushed, and also with the whole sort of green movement, sort of nationally and probably globally. You know, it, it's uh, quite often you know people are lying down on the m25 like block yeah. uh, what's what's the group called um in is it insulate britain Flat insulate Earthers. britain and <laughs> well, they're, they're letting tires down now as well aren't they oh, have you seen that that's the oh, newest thing and then there'll be another oh, group inflate britain like going <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. walking around with pumps <laughs> anyway insulate uh, those people those people like insulate britain so there's a big push in the whole green movement and to be honest it's this doesn't get talked about very often but for our sport if the more that that gets pushed, it's not good news for our sport. One of the main reasons is any serious um, big company, like say if you went in the sort of footy 100 companies mm-hmm. and you try to sell them sponsorship and they said, oh, what if for? And you said, oh, it's uh, motorbike racing. And mm-hmm. they're like, isn't that the stuff like that? Every every couple of laps, you put a new set of tyres on and you're like, yeah, that's the one. And you're like, oh, massive wagons all driving around mm-hmm. the country. You're like, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and it's, all, it's pretty much suicide for big for some big to companies be seen, you mean. to be to be putting money into that at the same time that there's like this huge push for everything to go green yeah now what is this where where is this going like sort of long term 10 15 years time it is it all going to go electric racing and because like for example if I, I think if if my job was to sell sponsorship i think it would be 10 times easier selling sponsorship for electric racing but 
Go, go on. I don't want to go. I'm, I'm desperate go not to go down that route. But for like a big company, if you said, oh, it's, um, I see exactly where you're going. The cut, the it's at the, yeah. it's at the, cut, it's at the cutting edge of uh, electric. Uh, and the, obviously, the racing is where all the technology comes from that's going to filter down. Yeah. And it's just such a, an easy sell. And it's just making it more and more difficult to sell our sport. And at arg- think. arguably, you know what? Electric racing sounds l- l- more safe, even though it's. No, it's safer than yeah. regular. You know what I mean? Well, it's, it's, like, de- it's oh. definitely not because, for one, if you've ever seen one of their motor e bikes crash, <laughs> yeah. the wi- the... have you seen them trying to pick them up out of the gravel? It's like, you know, when you watch the... someone who's, you know, if someone's super glued a quid to the floor and you watch <laughs> someone trying to pick it up, mm-hmm. they yeah, just, it's as if, weird. it's as if the bikes are super glued to the floor. They weigh that much. Yeah. And they, they have to, they have to touch them with a stick, don't they, or something to see if it's still active or not. Like Jesus. it's got a light on it, and if the white light's broke, you have to touch it with a stick. And if you, yeah, if you electrocute yourself, it's still on. We the, had one paddock fire at the TT. I think this is like, oh, not not nineteen eighteen. Yeah, I remember it that. was electric bike. Mm. Yeah, just boof. But they're Same, they all went skips. up at Hareff, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, the Guess whole garage it. went up. The whole garage went Jesus, up. Jesus, what do you mean? It's far, <laughs> but, it sounds but, safer, but, but it's but not. going down the going down the route of so like motorbikes for me it's all about noise it's all about i remember the first time i watched an electric race and the start was such an anti-climax because yep. you don't get that huge thing Thunder. of noise <laughs> and the same i went i went went to watch the tv the tv the tt the two mugen bikes were actually pretty impressive because you still got the whoosh and the whir that was quite good so the first one you know it was mcginnis or whatever the next one was anstey and then like then you've got some and i'm sure they were trying really hard but then you've got like some university that's puts a couple of car batteries in a Kajiva 125 frame and it goes. To be fair, them Nottingham University ones were a trick. Really? They were good. Yeah. They, 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 they used to run. on the podium. Well, like you these two Mugans. They would split the Mugans. They would split the Mugans. Touché, podium to podium. They would split the Mugans. Really? And, and considering the Mugans cost like a million, million and a half quid mm-hmm. for them to do it at uni and be like within a mile an hour or something off yeah. it, it was impressive. But I, I take your point. <laughs> but I think, but I think the. Um, on the flip side, on the positive, so Matt is that late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go on. He's been building up for that one as well, hasn't he, Dom? He's fighting these. He's got the fuel one out. He's got the electric. <laughs> Go on. The, um, Go on. Try me again. <laughs> Matt, who you had on, mate of mine, who you had on the on the on the pod a few months back now. So his kids have just been and done their first Revy race, which is like a little scoot bike with an electric um, motor in it. So. <clears throat> In grassroots, I actually think it's going to make motorcycling more um, attainable by more people. Mainly because they mainly because they don't make a noise, so people aren't going to kick off. Kick wind. off. Yeah. I mean, think how many more motocross tracks we can have. I I, you know, I was saying about oh, I've got to travel however many hours or however many miles to get to the nearest motocross track, whereas you could pretty much have one anywhere because it is. The noise is the only thing that people complain about. I'm sure yeah. over time they'll find other things, but it is the noise, you know, yeah. it's the so it would make it way easier to have motorcycle events and racing because basically anywhere can suddenly be a track. You can actually then have city centre um yeah. venues. Not you know, like yeah, a, pa- you know, a patch of grass some, there, suddenly yeah. becomes a potential place to ride your motorbike. Yeah. Mm. Whereas, whereas now it's not because you make noise, you draw attention to yourself and you get kicked off within 10 minutes. Another, th- another thing, obviously, with the <laughs> massive um, increase in the fuel prices, there's a huge, huge percentage is tax. I think it's like 53% of, mm-hmm. of the fuel price is tax. Now, obviously, people are saying, well, if the cost of the oil is going up, they should reduce the tax to keep it reasonable. But it's like the, the sort of green movement that are pushing to keep the tax up to then disincentivize people to travel. Yeah. Now, in terms of... The well, talking about the future, there's obviously there's a hydrogen option, which I think Yamaha are leading the way on, which is looking pretty promising. Combustion engine, but with hydrogen, that has to be the way forward. Hydrogen has to be. Or, Electricity still needs to be made somehow. Yeah, pre- precisely. But hydrogen is is the most from from my limited scientific knowledge is the is the flipping holy grail. Yeah, the, the thing is though, like you can you can listen. To, it's like anything. You can listen to experts, and you can get two. Or you can listen to us. No, <laughs> you can you can listen to experts speak about the same same problem, the same issue, and you can have like two really like highly intelligent, well researched things, and they have completely uh-huh. opposing uh, viewpoints. Mm-hmm. So it's like um, but like there's. 
I mean, if you did a, a survey of this country now and you, and you said, what's the biggest existential threat to mankind? Mm-hmm. Loads and loads of people will have climate change in the in like the top three. Yeah. Now, if you if you read, um, there was that book that like looked at um, spending, a, it basically looked at spending a pound and like what existential threats. And he, they, so this guy like researched it massively and he had it at something like 120th in the list. So... In terms of like, if if we're going to make massive changes, like everyone's going to go electric cars and whatever, you know, it it sort of needs to be like the, the science kind of has to be like sort of settled. Now, is it? I, I, I'm no expert on it, but it, the question is like, some people really believe that we're on the edge, and if we don't do something massive now, the world's never going to be the same again, and we're like at the point of no return. And then there's some other experts that don't think that and think that you know we're like we've got it in control and like that the forecasts look okay so like say i'm no expert at all but yeah it's... i think we're too much of ants to know the real answer aren't we you know yeah, like sure we're just the but, like the worker ants but the problem is Christian, if if we just like say oh we're idiots and we don't know anything and just lie back the, yeah, green, the green movement's going to basically take out our sport in the next 10 years the, the only thing that you that, do, that, that is the fact like it is yeah if, it, if we lay, lie back and don't resist it the, the the whole green movement if they look and say if if you believe that we're on the edge of n- no return and that the world's going to like our kids aren't going to have like a, a world to grow up in and at the same time you're trying to go on motorbike racing where every couple of like you'll literally do five laps on a set of tires mm-hmm. and throw and then all the fuel and trucks and everything like though at the same time people are lying down on the m25 there's like such a it's such a like contrast there and like somebody is right like that there is a like never mind depends, depends whether you believe that life's worth living though doesn't it you know like in your moment exactly or not in your moment are you, if, yeah, it's, it, if, you, if it's, it's sat a there and thought one. about it, you'd drive yourself insane. You're just going to yeah. suck it up and go for it, aren't I you? I think most... Uh, I'm, sure, much I'm ed- sure it's a thing. I've got a bit of a... Um, probably an unpopular like take on it. But if global Bring warming is a thing, and I'm sure it is a thing, but if it is a thing, like you know how um, it makes part of the world too hot, for example, to grow crops or whatever it is? Surely there's also another area that was too cold that now is becoming warm enough I think to grow about that. <laughs> Mind one thing that never gets mentioned. No, but like, which surely is, it just shifts. It just shifts. What, one it. thing that and you, anyone can check this in it's a fact. By the way, you're that, still part of chasing the racing here, kids. Yes, uh, we are still. still there's no bike in here somewhere. One yeah, thing that is a fact <laughs> is that do you know, uh, like as CO two increase, uh, like our CO two production increases. Mm-hmm. CO two is obviously what. Um, plants use for for their food so the world is actually if you look at it from satellites the world is actually getting greener the more co as co2 goes up which never really gets mentioned but but i do i do think as a sport we do have some kind of responsibility to try and be as good as we can be yes i'm sure it won't be long until we have some dual uh like electric motors electric assist within the motor like within the engine somehow you know like how formula one has those sort of like boost and like hybrid yeah like a hybrid so i don't i, I can't see yeah, why no, that yeah. wouldn't be a thing and and as to well, me i'm thinking it isn't going to give you extra power not less i'm thinking it's better not worse mm-hmm. but i do think you know you mentioned the tire thing and i do think that we we should just like i think we should run harder tires and we just have one or two sets all weekend and then like as long it. as everyone was on the, it's same. the same for everyone it, so it doesn't make the difference. competition fair yeah. isn't it so it, it there's no reason for us to use 15 tires a weekend in my opinion yeah it's only for the show it's only for the for the lap time that doesn't make a difference to the racing in mm. my opinion yeah no you're right no you're so right i do, th- I do think we have some kind of responsibility to do something but hmm. that's not down to us to then make the decisions is it that's down to the organizers and then that goes i tell it, it i think everyone's I, I don't think yeah. it, it, like no one likes waste and like just um pollution and waste whatever type of pollution yeah. it is but one thing that used to like just make me cringe and it was just so wrong to see is i did a few rounds in european superstock a good few years ago and you had to buy your tires in advance so you'd buy your tires for the weekend like a few grand whatever they Mm -hmm. were and then if it was wet all weekend and you didn't use one dry tire at the end of the weekend they got a knife and slashed them i've seen that being done through brand Uh new and you're thinking like what i mean imagine imagine i don't even know why they did that i know well it's so that there isn't a second hand market for the tires that's why but it's imagine like the 
into like Britain people watching that. Like, I, I can remember seeing that. Imagine, I mean, I, imagine me watching it. I mean, I anybody, anybody for that, for that is it's that is so wrong in every way. 100%. So that used to be the rule, didn't it? So you would, but your is that European Superstock? Yes. Yeah. So the World Championship paddock. Yes. I, I did a couple of years. I did uh, World Superbike and World Supersport, and I saw the same thing. Yeah. So I think in your entry fee, your entry fees are like a few thousand pound, aren't they? But that includes your tire allocation. Yeah, that's one. So you get. 10 tires for class one you get 30 tires for superbike maybe whatever it is but then whatever you don't use like like chrissy said it's just slash they just slash them yeah that is wrong that's such a weird anyway like, i think it's uh, like drowning kittens it's just there's no need for it is there uh, no <laughs> definitely not <laughs> great <laughs> Now, uh, just before... Perfect way to tie that one up. Uh, just before we, we came into the trailer, we we kind of vowed, because every time we have it on, we'll always end up talking about fitness. And we did have sort of vow to not talk about fitness, but oh, yeah, just so we're not going there. very quickly, just very quickly, you did a, um, a test at Loughborough University the other week. And uh, Christian won't say this because he's very modest, but it was the the, the most, um, like the highest performing motorsport athlete in the 15 year history. So uh, considering pretty much all of the big hitters, including MotoGP riders, World Superbike riders have been there, that is some achievement. So And also to defend his honour even further, he didn't come running through to the kitchen going, you'll never guess what happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, know. I, know. I, I was did, waiting I... ages for you to ask as well. <laughs> no, I was like, like, come, come on, come on. Walking in 10. <laughs> Like that, going. You'll never, you'll never guess what, lads. Fully you're flexing. Ne- that's it. Yeah, just, just ask the question. <laughs> oh, no. you been, so I know did... you sometimes do them like mad rides and stuff. Have you been doing anything? Uh, have you done anything like? No, no, no. I've not been doing anything, um, anything crazy. But just back on the Alicia Spargo thing, he <laughs> did, he did, because he's well into his cycling, and he did cycle down to pick up his new Lamborghini or Porsche or whatever it was the other day, and that was a seven-hour cycle. So. I've already looked it up. So when I go and pick up my Suzuki, which um, I'm, I'm thinking it'll probably be the Milton Keynes area, that's going to probably be like a 12 to 14 hour ride to pick up my Suzuki. So I'm going to trump a I'm going to tell him so. What are you getting a Suzuki Swift? I don't know, actually. Not sure. But I hope I am. Yeah, nice old car. I'll be a bit disappointed if I'm not and I've got to cycle back home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what are you here for? My car? Oh, no, yeah, yeah. not you're not having it, son. Pedal door, simple as that. But no, yeah, it was, it was, um, yeah. The team sent me down to Loughborough because they're the um, Bill Bay Suzuki's really um, near Loughborough, and I think they've always sent a lot of their guys down there. Danny Kent, who's recovering from his injury from last year, has been doing loads with the guys from Loughborough. How's he getting on? Is he like, yeah? Well, how's he getting on? Yeah, because obviously that injury, like dislocated pelvis, is that right? Was it? No. I, well, I know he's got a big scar, but. What he was telling me, so I've never spent much time around Danny. Um, actually, and I hope I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but I've only met him previously. I'd only met him once, and that was at um, uh, Bennett's uh, do. And he was world champion at the time, and I didn't get the best impression of him. Aye. However, at the time, he was world champion, and he was like 19 years old or whatever he was. So he had like a, this sort of arrogance about him. But... To all credit to him, when you're 19 for one, you have a you own the world. You own a chip. And secondly, <laughs> he did own the world because he was world champion at that moment in time. But since then, like since I signed up for the team, he messaged me straight away, like on on Insta, because we didn't have our like details straight away, just like oh, mint to have you on, and just got on really well. So I did a <clears throat> did a thing with Suzuki the other day, and what was amazing is he told me how one of the questions was how did you get into racing. And his story was absolutely not, it's not long, but it was just insane. So basically he just went to go and rent a car, at, um, just some go-kart track and the go-karts weren't running. So instead he had to go on a mini moto and that's what got him into it. Wow. Never. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing, isn't it? So just completely. So like his family weren't into racing. There was, it was nothing at all. And from that, a world champion Jeez. was born, you know, like, mm. so <clears throat> everyone was going, oh, that's an amazing story. And I was like, it's not really, is it? Because if you drove in the cart, you could have been like F1 world champion and you would have a lot more brass. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think, honestly, I think that's such an amazing story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to get back from his, in- to get uh, back onto his injury as well, he was telling me that he's never, I think he said he'd never broke a bone before or never had an Jinxed operation. It. it was one or the other. So never, it was either never had an operation or never broke a bone from racing. So that was his first one. I think it was a good one. Mm. Now what he had think? He, for... Well, yeah. <laughs> and he, um, it was only a low side, and he said all that happened was the the, the bike collected him. He, he slid off into the gravel. Everything was fine, and then there was just one last hit, and that's all it was. Jesus. It's a copper, wasn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, because yeah, actually I remember seeing him in the gravel and thinking, oh, you know, when you sort of know someone's going to be okay because you could tell it was a low side and yeah, you, you don't really yeah, bother. Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, you know that, you know that what sort of crash that is. It wasn't on the exit. Mm. And then he but yeah, just and... just the bike must have just um, just collected him. So <clears throat> I know that he's been back on the bike a few times, and I think from everything that's been said that he's been he's been all right. Like good. I mean, good dude's world champion. You know, he's flipping talented, talented guy. You don't get world champion for nothing do you? exactly yeah. and obviously since you last been on the, the last time you were on the podcast uh, it's been announced that you're joining Bill Bay Suzuki for BSB this year so mm-hmm. congratulations on on the move and um, have you had a chance to get out on the Jixi yet no so I'm, we're going away to Spain this weekend so cool. I was just filling in all the relevant forms that you still need to do for going away at the moment which is still a bit of a chew on so tomorrow um, <clears throat> we're going to go to Gradix which is a bit of a funny track, actually, because uh, just where it is, it's a bit in the mountains, so you can get like 20 degrees or you can get it under snow at this time of year. So we'll see. I've been there once before and really enjoyed the track. So it's weird because I'm, I'm really, I don't know what you're like. I don't know what you two guys are like, but I'm, I'm quite n- nervous about it, apprehensive. Whenever you get onto a new, something new, and it's been so long since the last time you've ridden, it's like, it's, it's always that not knowing and hoping that you, you gel with something and, yeah. There's, there's so many elements that you don't know about, isn't there, that you're just going, I just hope it goes well. You just want to get on it. And for me, I don't know how you guys feel, but I just when I want to get to that point where you go, oh, yeah, that's all right. It's my bike. You know, I, yeah. that feels all right. I understand it. And that doesn't always happen straight away, but I, it's just until you get to that point. I presume you haven't ridden the... <clears throat> because the last time you were on the Suzuki was like the old, the bigger old model, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and that was for Martin Halsall. Yeah. And the, it was like Bennett's back then. Yeah, it was, yeah. 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 Was, was that the last Ke- time you rode together on track? No, we Chrissy were, was after, after that. Yeah, that was beforehand. But, right. Yeah, um, but you were also on the Halsall Mavuno yeah. Suzuki. Yeah, yeah. So that was the newer one. Yeah. Sim- uh, I think it's the same, same bike. Same bike. Yeah, so what's out now? And uh, I mean, from seeing it on track, you'll have seen it plenty. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there's certain tracks, I guess, starting at Silverstone is probably the perfect place to be fair because the Suzuki traditionally does really well there. Yeah, you look in, at the in a way, I would there. almost like to wait for the, the yeah. joker card you know like because everyone knows now so there's the weight of expectation is from round one and i'm more of a like i do like i'm a bit Building. of a slow builder i like to build into it so i don't really danny's really excited about being round one being silverstone whereas i'm the opposite and i'm like i wish it was a bit further on into the championship so that i know exactly what i've got underneath me and then there's no pressure, but like last year, you did win the style competition fully locked up on the Ducati, <laughs> drifting around that turn. Um, I will literally never see you in this trailer again if I don't see a similar. Yeah, but I'm hoping. Like, like, I'm hoping what? I've got grip this year, so I'm hoping that I don't no, win the no, style no competition. Grip. No, no grip. I don't. I don't. No, I don't want to see that. I, like what? Like I up the photographer and just like fully lock big it. licks just once massive licks and then you can pick up the crown yet again of the most stylish t- that was tasty that oh. is the word also uh, I know we're in <laughs> March now but you've run the Christian in fat camp for uh, January and February you call it the fat camp and uh, <laughs> how it, many was, people, how it many... was very well signed up to this year wasn't yeah, it yeah it was like both months had like 180 odd 180 mm. odd people I give you a few how plugs many... on the old yeah I like that social. appreciate that I was about to say how many of his plugs have actually called it fat camp to your face <laughs> Is this the fat camp? Do you know what? This Actually, some, fat camp. somebody posted it. The first person I've seen properly to post up um, a change that they've done. You know, like a because I don't. It's I don't, our friend William Hintz. Yeah. yeah. What? A, have, have, you met, have you met? Unbelievable change. Like that's not, and that's nothing to do with me. That's just over time he's done it. But like he's done it as part of what I did because mm. I don't advertise it as you're going to lose weight. I do it as like it's to get fitter. Mm. So, but as part of it. That's an amazing achievement what he's done. You know, like it was a massive change that. Well, he he sponsors me and you, doesn't he? He helps out every Unreal. year. He's what a, what an ama- thing is. He knows it's like you know he's not a millionaire or anything like that, but he just gives us a little something which is a lot to us. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it what a fella he is, and you would not want to slap off him. Works off. Have you short. met him? Just like I think he well, might. Nah. I, I personally think he's a pirate because you always if you ring him, he's like on the weird. Goes, oh, <laughs> honestly, mate, he, he's got a big black beard and everything like that, anything, and he, he looks generally handy <laughs> with it, like. Something dangerous to me, it's like that. Jesus, you know, and he'll be listening to this going, You little shit. But you know what? I'm safe here at the moment. If he's on the other That's side of the world somewhere, that'd be ideal. He was actually supposed to come to our Patreon flat track day, but he was he's too stuck. busy murdering people. Oh, like, like, <laughs> he was stuck like in the Netherlands or something like that, commandeering but, ships. He was that, too busy. That's it, that's it. But, but um, I've just got me on the high seas. <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, I've, I've, I've listened to your podcast with Dave Neal on Off Track. Um, really, really enjoyed that podcast. It Rich was, Energy podcast. It was, yeah. It was, um, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was uh, kind of, obviously like I know your kind of story and it was very much a run through of like the last two years. Yeah. But to, to sort of condense it into an hour, um, I thought the crack was great. And I actually Maybe learned, tea was on, I had to be quick. Yeah, I learned a few, <laughs> a few bits and bobs. A little bit about your granddad, uh, mm-hmm. which obviously we, we touched upon, but I didn't know like any of the history. Dave's obviously done his homework, so credit him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was... Um, it was really and obviously people can like log on and uh, listen to that if you download off track i think it's on all the same platforms as ours one thing now and um i kind of knew at the time do you know about you um not feeling too good during the season Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago but i never that podcast like sort of highlighted last year yeah, yeah, yeah. That podcast highlighted to actually how serious it was and like how I'd, I honestly thought you just like weren't feeling the hundred percent type of thing. No, I, yes, don't. I was about to say because I actually haven't listened to this, so I'm looking looking forward to hearing this. Yeah, no. Uh, last year, um, <clears throat> yeah, I got I got pretty. <laughs> it depends what you say is pretty poorly. There was nothing that well, maybe I would have flipping dropped down dead. I don't know. I got I got poorly from pretty much straight after Knock Hill, mm-hmm. and I really struggled. Like I do, I know we laugh about it and stuff and I do take massive pride in being very physically prepared for racing. And then I just got to a point where it was completely the opposite and I was hanging to bits. I was struggling to get through races, like massively struggling to get through racing. And it was literally a like a switch overnight. Um. So yeah, it was a real strange, something happened to my body and it just was not happy and it was i struggled like crazy did you get to the bottom of like what exactly it was so um i had a lot of tests done um (laughs) it's gonna go all political and what's it not political but it's it's gonna be flipping red or blue red or green so it was literally the day after i had my second jab that i started with this issue <clears throat> so I'm 99% sure it was something to do with that, but it could also have been that I caught something, anything at exactly that same time. So I'm completely open to the possibilities of it could have been whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was basically, I, I ended up with a, with a form of like chronic fatigue, which was brought on by something as a catalyst. So it's not, <clears throat> I've always done a lot um, of activity so i've always been active and nothing none of that had changed so it wasn't like i'd suddenly ramped up training or i was suddenly feeling tired or it was anything like that it was something as as lit a fire within me the wrong sort of fire and that's everything else is ignited so i was really i really struggled with it honestly it was it was horrendous going to races trying to get for me to get through races was was really really tough to the point that i was having to change how i was racing and I was also trying to, I was embarrassed by what was going on. People from the outside, I hope, couldn't really notice it, but I knew absolutely, and it was it was horrendous. For, for our listeners, what, give us some examples of what you had to change on the bike. There'd be people going, what do you mean you had to change on your bike? Like, be more conservative and like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, as I said, it, it was really weird because literally overnight, I'd, I'd, we did the Knock Hill race, um... And then I always have a Monday off the day after, and that's when I went and got um, got me second jab. By the way, I had no, no no side effects from the first one, which is why I'm not sure what it was. Yeah, sure. Um, and then I went cycling the day after. So that was the Tuesday after Knock Hill. <clears throat> and I was like, I got to the point where I thought, I'm not even going to make it home. And it wasn't a long, it was just a normal one of my normal rides and I was absolutely hanging apart. Just, just a smooth 200 mile. No, but yeah. our, our listeners out there. You know what I mean? Just it, a, a, a jump down the road. Just up the glass going back. No, 100, that's it. 100K, but it's all, it, it's never, that's never changed. You know, it's, yeah. that's never been a problem. So it was just, and it was just mid seventies. And that was the lowest it went to. Blimey. This... What about what about that? Yeah, you, you've mentioned in the past you struggled to get a high heart rate, like say exactly. Racing, so. so, so that changed massively as well. So it went from being racing is one of the things that I can elevate my heart rate. So it was like previously my 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 max would be like one seventy, which is which is high. That's for me. That's really high. Some people that's that's you know low or everyone's tickers at work yeah. in a different to a range lot of people, that's dangerous so never <clears> yeah exactly but you know yeah. what i mean everyone has a range but yeah. i knew that 170 for me was really high up yeah and then next race 
because I always wear a chest strap to make sure it's it's accurate. Mm -hmm. It was one nine five. So, and it was basically just going straight to it. And the other thing was it was just continuing on an upward trend. So if the races were longer, I'm you know. Like, I don't, one, I don't one thing know where that, it would go to. One thing that proper got to us was when you, on, and this was on Dave's podcast about um, at Alton Park mm-hmm. when you came in and you like mm-hmm. literally like start crying in park for me because yeah. you were like that like like you'd absolutely maxed out. I had like nothing I said, left. I, 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 absolutely nothing I, left. I knew from just speaking to you that like you weren't hundred percent around that time, but I had no idea it was like that. Yeah. And do you know from like the the test that you did and in terms of like your recovery, did it just naturally sort of get better and better for over the weeks, or did you have like get medication for it or no so so for for any kind of fatigue syndrome which was basically what the end result was yeah um rest is the only real cure but obviously that's really difficult mid-season it's not possible the 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 doctor who's a sports doctor um that did the final diagnosis he was like we just have to stop and i was like what do you mean stop we just stop and i was like well no we've got six rounds left or whatever it is so i'm not not stopping so then we agreed to just tone everything down but then obviously from for me exercise isn't just a a physical thing it's also very mental and i want to go into a round knowing that i've put effort in but to put effort in was to not put effort in Mm. that's such a hard thing in every like counterproductive yeah in, in every way that was so hard for to compute in my brain that actually the best thing for me is to is to literally sit on the sofa and do nothing but i i wasn't able to do that yeah. so now i'm on the i'm on a gradual slope so i'm I, i'm not back where i was but every month that my, my so what you're saying is you top the 15 year record at love but you but you're, you're not only at your you're peak. only at bang like 90 well, percent. that's the ni- <laughs> that's the nice thing to know but I don't, I'm, I still, I'm still not back to where i was definitely not honestly yeah wow yeah he's still str- are you still struggling with this no, no, not, not compared to what I was. Not, good. not one bit. Uh, now it's only that the 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 heart rates that I'm seeing are still a little bit more elevated. So, like, what it was, it'll be interesting once I get back on a race bike. But honestly, there was races last year where it got to the point where I actually I, I thought I was going to explode, and that's the only way that I can put it. And I said that to someone. I didn't want to be um, melodramatic. Yeah, I didn't want to be like over. But that's genuinely, I, th- I felt like. My my head was going to explode, or my heart was going to yeah. actually pop out my chest, or I literally had nothing left. And that one after Alton Park, I did. I just burst into tears, and nobody knew. Wow. And I, but I didn't know why. Mm-hmm. I was just so drained of anything. And honestly, that race, which was the short race, which was the biggest worry for me, yeah, um, because it was the Saturday race. It just everything at once. It was just it was too much, and it was all. Just everything. It was. I could see it. Something slipping from my hands that I had almost no control over. It was my own body, and it was doing this thing to me that I didn't want it to do. Mm-hmm. And I was fighting against it, and it was just not giving me what I wanted. And it was just such a. I had loads of things going on outside of racing as well at the same time. You know, you know how things snowball one way and then they snowball the other. It was kind of a a mm. huge thing of that. But you asked about how I changed. The way I raced, so like um, I would then just follow and just sit there. You know, I'd happy to let someone else lead the race, and I would just sit there and conserve energy until, okay, we've got four laps to go. Have I got anything left? Yeah, now we go. Or have I got anything left? No, we're just gonna have to stay here and and finish the so, race. So Jesus. that's and that's so hard to do as a racer, but when you. <laughs> I, it's so hard for me to describe that sensation of how fast my heart was beating for me and how much pressure build up inside my body that I could feel. You know, it was almost like it, I was going to pop. You know, it was, a, it was the weirdest sensation. And I got it, it caused me to start getting really bad sickness after a, after races and just, it was, it was, it was difficult. But now I definitely, it's a really, the, the point to get into that bad point was literally an overnight just a, a flick of the switch and it was like heart rates through the roof but over time it is very slowly coming back and it is now it's more than workable and i was and i was really happy with that test the other day because it at least i know that i'm in a good shape even if i don't feel like i'm as i was yeah on track yeah mm-hmm. to be blunt in that situation how many people of the team of paul bird knew that did paul know 
Did Paul know about the situation? No, nah, I, 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 I really tried to keep it completely to myself. It was only, I think, after Cadwell, my side of the garage, knew that there was definitely something not right. The other thing that was happening, I was, I was sweating that much that I would sweat for an hour afterwards and it was just like running off me, you know, like wouldn't stop running. And there was a few post-race interviews that, that I did last year. And like, I'm I'm just absolutely dripping, completely dripping. It would carry on. And it was the weirdest thing. It would just honestly be pouring off me. Um, Cadwell was probably the first time that my side of the garage knew there was something a bit wrong. We were doing a debrief and I just, I had to just go to the med center because I was just, I needed to go and have someone around me that could look after me if I, if someone, that's yeah. how I felt, you know, I was like, I'm, I just have to, because the med center at Cadwell's walking distance from the bottom garages, it's like 50 steps. Yeah. So I'm, I just you had felt to. felt safe there. Yeah. I, I honestly, I wanted to go somewhere where there was medical professionals around me because that's. <laughs> just in case, wow. like, yeah, yeah, touch and go. It's quite crazy. Yeah. And obviously, uh, we mentioned the fact that you've joined the Bill Base team. Um, the Obviously, last year you were with PBM alongside Josh Brooks. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, like. I'm waiting to see how you're going to put yeah, this question to me. I'll I, I, I tell, tell you what, ask the question. <laughs> on, no, 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 you ask the question that he wants to ask no, you. I can't wait, I can't yeah, wait. So, um, <laughs> Go for I, it. I guess, like, are you kind of surprised with I, with how everything sort of transpired and how everything's worked out and the fact that, you know, obviously you're aware, like, everyone's got opinions on mm -hmm. Facebook and stuff, and I guess the biggest sort of surprise to most people is if, um, if Paul was going to replace one rider in his team last year, going off results from just from last year you would um you would have expected him to have replaced josh is it um is it a surprise to you like sort of how things have worked yeah yeah i think that was probably the biggest surprise was that um obviously tom sykes is joining bsb and joining the pbm team which for one i think is great for for bsb mm. anything that brings fans in um X -world is, champion. is really good ex world champion you know he's a uh, he, he's um an interesting individual so that that always brings more interest in doesn't it you know it, he's colorful character in he so yeah. um and and i knew he was sniffing about and it was always ever going to be that it would be a three rider team so right. to then end up was was that on the cards at some point yeah yeah that's what i was that's what i was told uh at the last round at last year right so i knew that tom was fully on the cards and everything was that's how it was going so that's fine um and yeah then it all changed around as as I've spoken about on a few other things. I'm not. I don't want to badmouth anyone or whatever. It's just a. It's just a shame how the ending happened. Yeah. I was just left a little bit later than I needed to be left, and I was told things that transpired to be less true than it seems that they were. So, yeah, I wasn't offered a contract, but Josh was, and I wasn't told that at the time. And yeah, Josh being offered a contract is is that's pretty bitter for me, just because. I beat him last year. Yeah, he outperformed him last year. Outperformed him last year. It's on year. paper, isn't it? Um, I know I'm cheaper than him. And um, we I would never I... say you're cheap, mind, so just how I want to put <laughs> and that. I, yeah, but, and I hope I'm a nicer guy than him. If I've lost out in that respect, I'll be gutted. But it's. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. You know, there's there's, there's reasons of, behind everything. So I'm sure. Say, with, I'm with, sure the team have their reasoning. With motorsport, there's the there is a lot of politics and like the way yeah. things work with sponsors yeah. and the organisers and everything. And sometimes, like you say, it, it might it might have been out obviously out of your control, but it could have been out of yeah. say Paul's control and what, whatever. Yeah. So we yeah. But it, I guess people will be surprised in it. But like you say, bringing Tom into the championship definitely adds a flavour to the championship and the fact that Haslam's back as well. Uh -huh. Um out of so looking at the grid now, taking yourself out of the equation, who who were you sort of if you were a gambling man, who were you fancying for the twenty two title? Uh, well, uh, the, the BSB grid for this year is stacked. Yeah, I mean, we've got nobody. Yeah. Nobody's left. I was about to say, is it the most? You were telling me it's like the most. It, it's going to be the, the fullest grid. There's thirty-four. There's, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, there's thirty-four confirmed full timers, and I, I assume there's no more to come because they've pretty. They've pretty much, you know, like they've been publishing it and going like, right, here's your list. Yeah. There might be one or two that add in. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I've got some big news. <laughs> um, I'm not <laughs> um, Like, so that obviously there's there's. Non, nobody's left. Tom's come back in. Leon's come back in. You've come back in as a ex-superstock champion. Tom's come back in as Tom Neves come back in as superstock champion. 
So that's four. Am and I missing some others? Oh yeah, loads. There's there's quite a few stepping up from uh, like Liam Delves is coming up. Um, there's uh, there's there definitely is a few more. Yeah. Oh, um, did I? But but basically, so Dan Jones is coming. But you've up already up. added. But from champion status, that's four extra champions that have come into an already stacked category. Yeah. You've then got <clears throat> you've then got the likes of, I think Brad Ray and Kyle Ride on. The Yamahas that won the championship last year, so their team has moved to Yamaha, and that I think one because of the bike is very good, but also because the riders are very good, and I think that'll suit their style. Yeah, definitely. I think those two had a much worse season last year than that. I'm sure than they were expecting, but mm-hmm. that I think the most were expecting. Um, but I think they're going to be really, really strong. Yeah. Obviously, you've got the main contenders. The championship is absolutely stacked. To call it now is is nigh on impossible. I can't wait to ride the new my new bike. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's um, it, like I'm just looking forwards now. You know, so it's it's a big opportunity for me. I'm seeing this as a big opportunity. Yeah. Um, and I think that the Hawk Race and Build Bay Suzuki team is it, it's a massive thing. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> we've I've had extra help from from simon from vision track so he's come across as as more of a sponsor and support into the into the hawk racing team to assist me along that's good because so, can i just vision say that they've gone with lee hardy and so they are massive well, is that right can mm-hmm. i just say as as Jeez. do you know in terms of like the sport the whole sport of uh, motorbike racing in yeah. the uk in terms, if you take simon out as a single person yeah. like as a single person that puts money in like it'd be crippling it's like he a massive in terms of the only british motor gp team with the michael avity squad yeah, yeah then all the stuff that he does with all the kids michael avity's got like 16 kids riding from all sponsored by vision track mm-hmm. you've got you yourself and the um bill base team yeah. now lee hardy's title mm-hmm. sponsor for leon haslam back in and i'm sure he sponsors other people as well <clears throat> um i mean I, I i i would love for for simon to come on to your show and uh, we've i've been trying to get him to to do that just to explain what he does and not what like why you know like yeah that's what yeah, yeah. why why would you plow all this money into into something and, and i hope he comes on and tells his own story but the story is from from what he's told me is that he was a budding racer and didn't feel like he had the opportunities and now he's in a position to give to give those opportunities out i mean Fair play. um the the motor three project is just an incredible it's just insane you know to a team like that the budget must be into the millions you know a couple of million to to run a motor three team mm. at just least. for the diesel if you think. <laughs> now <laughs> um and and now we actually finally have this route to into into gps for for, for british talent which we never ever had you know for so many years even when like we've we've had in the past we've had when not even that long ago when Rory Skinner won the British Talent Cup and he was supposed to then get a Motor 3 ride after it and it never even came about. You know, even the ones that should have got that route through never got the route through. Mm. And now there's an actual tangible stepping stone sort of, there's a route that kids can go through. And I think it's amazing. That's from from the junior class, you know, from the, the Ovales or whatever it is, that there are the pit bike style things that they're riding, then to step up into into the British Championship and on Motor Threes, and then hopefully into World Championship. It's the it's the first time we've ever had an Italian Spanish style system. Mm. Yeah, and which yeah. is yeah, which we've definitely um, been missing. But but we're not doing it through a federation. You know, we're doing it through an individual at the moment, which yeah. is credit to him. Absolutely insane. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, like hopefully, see, hopefully after that plug, he'll come on the podcast. Oh, oh. I just, I've just got so much respect, and that's the. Simon's of Simon, uh, like Vision Track were 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 PBM sponsors for for two years solid the whole time that I was was at PBM, and and I never really had anything to do with him. I just team sponsor, not not for me to go and like pester him or talk to him. So yeah. honestly, for a year and three quarters, I never stayed out of his way. I honestly, out of never said yeah. two words for him other than hi and bye. <laughs> you know, yeah. like that that was the our vocabulary. And then, literally, it wasn't long after the Motor Three thing was announced that I, I just said, "Oh, we we're in hospitality." And just went, "Oh, Sam, I just want to say what I think. What you're doing is, I think it's amazing. I think it's really fantastic." And he just pulled up a chair and we got chatting, and it was just a. That's good. Yeah, it was amazing, and I really, 
I, I just that's a big thing you know for someone to put that kind of budget into into someone else's dreams yeah is incredible but um obviously a few years ago i don't think most people would have heard of what vision track mm-hmm. is and like it, i remember i think richard cooper was the first person yeah, that was, i kind yeah. of sort of brought simon into the paddock and that's the first time that i sort of seen that do you want to give a quick plug of what actually vision track is as a business well they they he went blank there <laughs> I've never seen a man more. He might as well as wife walked in and gone, who's these knickers? That was literally that situation. He just went, that was Shakespearean. They're yours, darling. They're your knickers. Honestly, that was Shakespearean, that plug. And you know what? You tripped on the finish line. So that was, I'm so happy to be a part of that moment. Continue. You're so mean. Yeah, they they just do systems to... um... Monitoring systems for for HGVs basically, mm-hmm. so yeah, just in all the lorry, not not necessarily just lorries. I've seen them on on other vehicles. To be fair, I've seen them on. I think we've got a contract that I've seen on um, on some of the NHS vehicles as well. But it's just vehicle monitoring systems, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know why. Well, I know why I decided to 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 put it into to bike racing. But it's nice that someone from outside of that realm can just decide. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Definitely. And it's funny. I did a. I did an interview with someone. I did a Q and A, and and wasn't that long back. But they said, "Oh, like who do you think's the next up and coming talent?" And I, my answer was like, "Oh, it's it's looking pretty grim for a few years." You know, I couldn't I couldn't see anyone coming through. You know, we know we've got good youngish riders, but honestly, like kids have to be so good, so young now that they that they they're plowing them through from Spain and Italy and that sort of thing that we're going to, I thought we were going to really struggle, but having seen um, what Scott Ogden did and, and Josh Watley did very well as well, but having seen how competitive they've already been was a real eye opener. I didn't think we had talent already that was, that was like that. Mm. Now they've gone through, not through the British system, which is probably why that they've progressed that quickly. But yeah, it was, that was really nice to see. Cause, cause I think if, yeah, it's it's amazing that that they're already on the pace they're on because that yeah. you know, motor, motor three is insane. So uh, fair play. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, looking forward to following that. Just a quick one as well. Uh, you mentioned Vision Track used to sponsor PVM and then they're now sponsoring uh, Lee Hardy as a title sponsor. Mm-hmm. Um, is am I right in saying is Paul Bird sponsored by MCE? That's the the, the name's been changed, hasn't it? It's not the insurance, though, is it? I think it is. I, th- I thought that all went bust, and like, uh, I don't know. That's why because it's yeah. sponsored from Paul Bird. That, that all the money's gone. I seen that. It was, it was. It was announced as <laughs> Tom's had the last quid. That, that's it. Well, that's I have seen it, it as announced as MC Ducati. Yeah. But yeah, I thought it must be like a, a manufacturer company or something also called MC. I, th- I thought that. I think it is the same. Um, I honestly don't know the ins and outs, but it was so, it's something to do with. I don't. I think MC has different. Branches, yeah, branches yeah. arms, whatever you call it. So, oh, right. so it is the I think, same. like I with think, Big Ed. And yeah, that. I think part of it went bump, but then the other part is still alive. Yeah. and that. So I don't, I don't know exactly. Don't quote me on it yeah, that you will, because obviously it's going out. But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, you don't Christian know. Said, officially, officially. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I didn't. I was supposed to mention this at the start, but I forgot. Uh, I, when I introduced you and your your various accolades, now the um the champion of the Bennett flat uh, track. Uh, the go karting day. Oh yes, we <laughs> had so cars. much fun. We had so much fun, it didn't was. we? Well, it was funny to be fair because the, the uh, I think it was called Dan and Tom Neve were probably faster than us too, but then they took each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, like I sort of pile drive them into them, and then you slept. You went from fourth. So to we, first. you so wouldn't was, do that, was, Chrissy, would you? Jeez. Yeah. So Bennett and BSB had this go kart day, and it was so much fun, wasn't it? So I was due to do, I I was due to do all day. But I forgot I had a Suzuki thing on then in the morning, so I missed the morning. And we both, so we both turned up in the afternoon, didn't we? And it, we we got proper done over because the first race we did was the was the BSB riders race. So everyone in the morning had already practiced all morning, and, and no we just went on. You get five laps, didn't we, or something to go and practice, mm-hmm. and then we had to go and race. So we got we got done over a bit in the first race, didn't we? But then we had the afternoon to ourselves. I couldn't believe I'm, I've still got the bruises now. <laughs> I couldn't believe how much how much driving we got to do. It was literally like one race on, one race off, wasn't yeah. it? It was crazy. And then yeah, in the final, I was on pole one, <laughs> and like Chrissy just hounded me crazy for the whole race, and with. Tom was there, wasn't he? And then there was another, one of the customers, customers was was there, Daniel, yeah, who yeah. 
He was definitely a racer. He had his own website across his visor. Yeah, he was a go cop. He definitely, like, you know, like he'd done it before. He had the shoes and everything. <laughs> and the worst thing is, is I'd actually asked Alpine Stars to send me some full karting kit. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm glad they didn't because, like, I would have liked the right. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. All the gear, no idea. And I went from first, you know, back to fourth because you nudged us. And once one got us, like, all three of them got us. And then we had it's like just a BSB a, round yeah. there. But then like th- three corners later, we had a massive pile on, didn't we? And it was the, just the funniest thing. We had so much fun. Yeah. It was just mint crack. But it was it was one of them where you just think you can't go any faster. It was just we were all just such on such a similar pace, weren't we? And you're mm. just like it was really good because you had brand new carts, didn't we? It was a it was a really cool track and it was a good day out. It's nice when you get to do those sort of things. Yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of I know your aquatics like this coming week and then up to um, you've got the BSB tests. I haven't had an opening. There um, it is, straight for you that one. <laughs> on the uh, in terms of you, Dom, when when are you? When's your first outing of the year? Uh, Croft is that at the end of, end of this month same weekend where it's snet and I think for the first BSB test right 25th 26th 27th so you well you have how much what riding have you done have you done any stock thousand riding I've, I've done nothing so literally you've done my, nothing you've time, done nothing mm, yeah. you'd be one of the only people on the grid that haven't to be fair like mm-hmm. I think everyone it's been busy the last few months like everyone but to, we were talking about this on the podcast the other day like how much of a benefit riding a super stock bike what, what, what's your opinion on that? Is riding a stock bike beneficial for your super bike racing? Well, so I'm going to go out to Guadix on a stocker because... Yeah, that's why I was getting confused here. I'm thinking, yeah, you, so, yeah, yeah, so you are doing... BSB some... rules, I don't know exactly the rules, but you get a certain number of days that you can use on the super bike. So it would be daft for me to go out on day one, having not ridden for six months, having never ridden that Suzuki, to go straight on a super bike, use up a day of testing... You know, and just be like, well, that's one off the list, you know. So if you needed it mid-season and you've used up your allocation of days and you wouldn't have it. So it makes sense to go out and ride a stocker. For me, I, I think it makes sense to go and get used to something. But I do think it can go the opposite way. So just going back to two years ago when I first jumped on the Ducati, I took a van, went to Spain, did like eight or nine days on a stocker type mm-hmm. Ducati. And then they turned up with the race bike and our official testing, BSB testing back then was Spain because it was pre-everything that went on. BC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I hate and I hate and I hated the race bike. <laughs> Absolutely hated it because it didn't feel like the nice, comfy bike that I'd been riding. So actually I think a few less days would have been better. Mm-hmm. So I think I did too much out there in one. So I do think it can have some kind of detriment because you can get real comfy on a stock feeling bike because they're they're just I've that got, little bit plusher and they're a little bit... I've got a funny story about that, actually. I've, I once had... A, well, in fact, we've still got it. It's over in Spain, like an old beat-up uh, Honda 600. And I used to just do laps and laps mm-hmm. at a Cartagena. And I once crashed it. And because I was there by myself, I, like, didn't really fix it up. So it had... <laughs> the the right handlebar was, like, sort of down like that. And I used to... And if anyone... If I, like, ever said to someone, oh, can you just hold my bike? They, were, they would always be like, what on earth? Like, why have you got this? <laughs> anyway, when pre-season testing came around, I went out on, like, the race bike, pulled into the pits. I was like, there's something up with these handlebars because <laughs> you got used to it because straight handlebars <laughs> felt like as if it was like oh yeah <laughs> but yeah yeah you can definitely you can definitely do do too much i think there's a real fine line i like mm. to uh, personally i think as long as you're riding a bike you you're becoming sharp so like i like oh, keeping with motocross uh people like pit bikes i don't have one but you know there's that or <clears throat> Do you reckon pit bikes beneficial? Because with being open and frank about it, you're you're on the same you're on the same wavelength, aren't you? I, Riding the little one forties, yeah. you know, the little stuff like that. You said it's not particularly beneficial for you. It's Is a waste that... of time for me, but yes. I've I have had a go on one of my friends' one uh, fifties with like a slip of cl- it was like twelve grand pit bike, mm. and that was like you you were like using like similar sort of skills and like mm-hmm. so like I think if you had like a wicked one, but just like a standard pit bike for me is I'm just burning fuel and rubber. Like I, I don't really feel like I'm getting yeah. anything out of it. Yeah. I think a lot of it depends what sort of rider you are. Like from the roads, I was always surprised at how often road riders often do very little. Uh, yeah. Even less than, because obviously the race bikes, they're so expensive to run and there's a testing ban and all that, that it's, it's really rare that you get out. You don't get out often on one day and it's certainly almost never your race bike. 
So we get out not very much, but I'm surprised that the Rhodes lads do it even, even less than that. And I mean the strict Rhodes lads. Bruce Anstey's like Yeah, Anstey just of... like doesn't <laughs> sit on a bike, does he for eight months and then just rocks up somewhere. Bruce, like, I would, he's generally my hero in racing for that sole reason. He just turns up, doesn't he? And he just has a beard or doesn't have a beard. It doesn't really matter. And he goes out and bangs 132s in and you just think... It's insane. No, I, I would love, I would love to. Same with John. Like John does a little motocross and he enjoys riding his bikes. But you see that it's very public, very open. But Bruce just appears. He's fine. I, I want to be Bruce. That's why I idolise him so much because I want to be him. I mean, it's just think because I, I tell you what, social media is the biggest killer for me because mm. I look, you look at your competition. I don't care what it's competition all year round with race, isn't it? You're always looking at the other person. You always think, yeah, oh, I don't care who you are. And you just think, Jesus, they're out there. And every man and his dog is doing more and more and more. You know, you're saying like yeah. riders, like road riders doing less. Even to, like there's Forrest Dunn. You know what I mean? Like he's a good friend of mine and mm-hmm. he's on a really tight, low budget. And he, he's out in Spain. You know what I mean? And you're thinking, I'm, I'm going to get out of my BM that I'm buying probably twice before the Northwest because of money. But it. It is, you know. Yeah. It, 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 it's but like, with, with social media as well, it is hard because people do only portray what they want you to see as well and make it look like they're doing loads. You don't always know if they've had a day full of red flags and they got five laps in, or they didn't show the fact that it snowed until three o'clock. And then, yeah, it's a mind it, it's game. Real, it is a mind game. It is. It's really, really hard. And it can, it can even, if we're going to go fully down that route, it can also go wrong for you. Um, I know motocrosses can be a bad one. I had a real big scare. Actually, I was just starting to record the second month of the fitness program and I had a real big scare at the motocross track. I did genuinely think I'd bust my leg. And it was, it, it, you know, and you're just like, this is a problem, you know, like a real yeah, problem. Yeah. I was like down going, I've done yeah. something bad here. And I'm almost never wrong. And thankfully I was wrong. I was all right. But then you can go <clears throat> down the, obviously the Taron McKenzie route and he, he got one afternoon and, that was it. And spanned himself. And they were due, I think he was due to do four or five weeks out in Spain. You know, he had a, he had his super motorbike, which he just had built. And, you know, he had his a practice bike, you know, and they were going to, they were probably going to go and do some like cycling or whatever else they were going to do. You know, he had this big plan and all of a sudden one afternoon or the first afternoon, you end up in the gravel for whatever reason. And, and he, and he bust himself up. So it can, it can easily go either way. But I, I always think that more riding is better, but I don't necessarily yeah. set personally, but it works different for everyone. But personally, I don't think it matters to me what sort of riding I do. As long as I'm sort of getting my eye in, so to speak, Yeah, then it's it's enough for me. But everyone works differently. Yeah. I, 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 on a personal, I feel massively like, like I'm four weeks behind on anything that I planned on doing. And it's just like it, that pressure's there. And that's quite a hard thing to shrug that. Do you not think that it could be anything like it? There was even videos of like Alex Rins and Marquez training go karts, like shifter yeah. karts. But that, like, it's just getting your eye in. It's getting mm. sharp. It's it, it's getting your reactions almost ready for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're training react your reactions more than anything. The only thing that I find does take time is getting that because um, you go fast on a motorbike, don't you? Yeah. And like, but you forget how fast you go and the first time you go out you're doing like you're probably going 10 seconds a lap slower than you're gonna go and you feel like you're going a zillion miles an hour and you can so you've just got to go through that um sort of like adjustment phase i think when the fastest thing you've been in for the last four months is me transit van and then all of a sudden you know you'll you jump on something that does 120 mile an hour in first gear so (laughs) (laughs) do you know what i mean which my transit van doesn't do (laughs) <laughs> so Definitely not th- now. there's a big adjustment phase i think yeah fair enough. but also also do you not think it's weird that we've had two years where we've basically had eight months off and then three months of absolute carnage as in like you get going and that's you just bosh it out from round one to round 11 and now would you prefer the bosh it out kind of system would i'd you... love to bosh it out but... <laughs> No, but I do. But I think that can work in two ways because obviously, like the injury. Yeah. yeah, if you if you get on a poor run of form or have an injury, then if the rounds are back to back like we've had, that's really difficult. If you get on a good run of form, that can work really well for you. Now we're back to like this normal thing where actually it's going to be weird that you get back from race one and you go, "Oh, I've got a weekend between," and you can adjust what you're doing, or you can. It's going to be 
it's strange, I think. It's you, it's you know, hard but... that it's come. It's not hard, but it's strange it's come around so quick. I forgot that I used to spend February abroad and. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Training and do you know going from, go, going back to your BSB picks? Give us your favourite for the championship and your outside pick. And I do you want me. Can I go first? Go for I'm, it. I'm gonna go. Not including ourselves. Yeah. I'm not including go, yourselves. I'm no, gonna, you can't because then it just yeah. it looks a bit vague. Yeah. I'm gonna go. <laughs> so vague. I'm gonna go Haslam for my um for my firm choice for the championship. Really? And I'm gonna go for right. Bradley is... Ray as my outside pick. Oh, Over to you, Christian. Okay, so outside pick, same team, but I'm going to go Kyle. I'm a big fan of Kyle, as everyone knows whenever I always talk about him. Um, friends. Friends. Bike friends. <laughs> oh, bike friends. <laughs> Actually, I'm less of his friend. He sold his motocross bike. I got really mad at him for that. If you're listening, Kyle, buy a motocross bike. Um, and... I'm going to stick with the champion, Taron. Mm. Are you, why are you so surprised that I said Haslam to just not think yeah. he's up to it or the team or the bike or I, I wasn't no I wasn't surprised obviously he's ex BSB champion um, mm. you did say really did I <laughs> yeah. did that come out yeah. I thought I just thought that <laughs> <laughs> dang uh, oh, I didn't realise that came out yeah it did <laughs> And, if well, not, and, and it, it wasn't, in. yeah, and it yeah. wasn't a thing, and now you've totally made a thing out of it. Yeah. What about you, Dom? <laughs> no, I just want to know why he thinks Hasm's not going to do with it. Well, it was your firm choice and your outside pick. I don't think Tom Sykes is going to do it. I know that's not the answer, but I, I just think <sighs> Ta- Le- is... Leon, Leon's done it. Sykes has been with every manufacturer other than Jakai. Mm, it, it, I know, oh, no, no, I know not, that it's ta- hard. Not, to, it's I'm, hard I'm, to adjust that bike because it is different to the rest. So that'll be the first thing for him. So that'd be I'm, interesting. I, you know what? I don't. I don't it's often again what he's do, what he's world champion for a reason. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I just I don't, I don't know. There's something to. I, I I love being proven wrong. I love being proven wrong. But something's just telling me it's not that. And I, you know what? As far as a winner, Jesus, I couldn't even put it. What about O'Halloran? You know what? I got. I want. I want O'Halloran to win it. You know what I mean? If I had to pick someone who want like want to win it, because I just think he needs to shake that off. I mean, he's no good at go karting, is he? <laughs> is he not? He's oh, shy. his head was fried. Really? I spat him straight away. <laughs> <laughs> he said he wanted to go home after the first race. I was really? The first race. <laughs> Class. Class. But not outside. Not on purpose. To be fair, we just had it coming together. But he ended up going back, like backwards on the ramps. <laughs> outside pick. You know what? It's that depth. I'm just, you know what? You, you've picked a good year. You've picked an extremely difficult year on a very difficult task to get into British, but I think it's a perfect year to do it. It's just so, so spicy. Mm. It really is. You know what I mean? On and out, I just. I think a lot, a lot of people would maybe say um, Jackson or Skinner or Danny Buchan or Andy Irwin or. Uh, as, as an outside pick. I'm just sort of giving suggestions of like who you might. You might I choose. think the mad thing is, there's that many race winners potentially. Mm. You know, race winners. Yeah, actually, there really is. Yeah. You know, you know, like you know, I wouldn't be shocked if all them names, like you know, like you know, Rory, he'll get a win. You know, there's that many. It's such a strong grid because of that reason. There'll be so many winners, but stringing a championship along and that consistency. But then Vickers on the BM, that's big. Mm. It could go really well, and he could be right at the front. Who knows? It's mad. You've almost got everyone in their place. The, the thing with BSB is it's there is that many people I think that can win a race. There is a difference between winning there is winning a race and and stringing it out for a championship. So in the past few years, Bridewell, there's only been yeah exactly. Bet. So, Bridewell's my outside bet. Outside, outside. <laughs> no yes, not being blunt. No no no, 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 no. I don't get no no. It's oh. no no because he's been he's always at the front. Uh-huh. But the thing is he's 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 he, it's that consist. He's got yeah. the consistency. But he's my outside bet because it, it's that strong at the front. I yeah. think it's, but it's. I mean, the, the last few years, is, obviously, there's been Jason, <sighs> Taron. Good, good pick to be. Tommy, yeah, it is a good there, pick. Yeah, yeah Jason, Taron, Tommy, myself. Brooksy was off form last year. But sort of that sort of, there was that grouping. And then there was like the next group, which is a very large group. The next group, yeah, and each person from the next group can has win a, a race track. very easily and, yeah. and win a few races. And Glenn Jackson, yeah. Skinner, Danny, Danny. See, yeah. the mad that I'm going to say, like, 
I want him to win a race. You know what I mean? But it's, no, no, I do. You know what I mean? Matt, I want him to so win the championship. What, what are outside. your aspirations for the season, Chris? Aspir- uh, of a grid of, like, say, 34. Yeah. I think <laughs> if I can, early on in the season, if I can start um, nicking a few points and getting some mm-hmm. good finishers, um, I think That's a huge task in this field, it, isn't it? It, 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 it is. Realistically, with, like, uh, obviously brand new like bike for the team and like yeah um so yeah i'm sort of thinking around around that sort of area um i kind of but to be fair like i'm kind of just going to go go with testing and where wherever i'm at at round one just build build on that yeah. so if i'm miles away from that at round one it's i won't be like oh i'm like failed mm-hmm. he'll just be like well that's where we start and then um yeah just I, i'm really look, it's like such a massive task i'm really looking forward to just like getting proper stuck in um and yeah it's exciting isn't it but like i say please hit me on me healthy side not the other side but it's like (laughs) but when i say that like i want you to win the championship but i think you will win races there's no doubt in my mind that you will win races but the sole reason i don't think you win the championship is because i've never seen that bike win the championship yeah, that is, no, no, you know what I mean. No, I don't, I don't want an answer from you. But this, that's my thing. I, I will well, fully no, believe you'll win races. It is, it is. I've never seen the Zuki up there. Like, obviously, we are, we are all jockeys. So, like, it makes a big difference what horse you're at. If you're a jockey, don't matter how good you are. If you're on a Blackpool donkey, you ain't winning the Grand National, are you? Yeah. So it depends. But there are no, there are no Blackpool donkeys on the grid. Yeah. It is, it is all a very close field. Yes. There's there's two steps to it. There's one is how well do you gel with your bike because different people ride certain bikes better and worse. Yes. And there is always this rotation of what's the best bike on the grid. So we've seen it for a few years. The Ducati was, and now the Yamaha sort of stepped it up. And then there'll yes. always there'll always be another bike that suddenly makes sure. some kind of step. And it was funny because we saw last year that the Yamaha didn't make this massive grand step. It made this small difference that made all the difference. Yeah. So. It could be that a team, a manufacturer, there's not, I don't, from what I can gather, there's no like massive radical changes from any manufacturer, but it might not need that. Mm, yeah. So it could be that some team just finds some little, I think something different okay. and then all of a sudden it changes. But for, with regard to my bike, I've never ridden the Suzuki in the new one. So yeah. all I could do, I, I spoke to Steve Hickey when we were sort of going through the motions and I, I said to him, do you, do you believe your bike can win the championship? And he said, yeah. So I just went, fine. I'll take your word for that. That's yeah. that, Because to me, that's that's all I need to know. Yeah, of course. Is that the guy that runs that believes, believes in his bike. So I'll 100% believe in that bike. Is it, uh, no, and that's that's great. That is, that's really good to hear. Because the thing is, arguably, you know, if you own a team or own a, mm-hmm. you know, you run a particular brand, it's, it must be so frustrating. You know, when you hear on MotoGP all the time, they always say it's a Ducati track or it's a mm. Yamaha track or a Honda track. That must boil every manufacturer's piss because it's just like, it's tarmac. In, in all fairness, <laughs> you know, like, there's, there's so many variables are... to that. Don't get me wrong and everything like that. But yeah. in the same breath, if the bike can win one race, you know, like fundamentally, they must sit there and I go, it can win that race. Why yeah. can't it win every well, race it, it, in all fairness though to, and I think to sort of uh, like build on the point that you were making with Christian is imagine like if there was a BSB uh, PlayStation game and you kind of you pick your rider and then you go through the manufacturing you pick you could choose your bike for each track yeah I th- we all know kind of which which bikes you would you would choose if you were playing the PlayStation yeah, yeah. and at certain tracks some tr- some bikes do particularly well yeah I would yeah, to to take your point on that one, I would choose a Yamaha for Alton. I would choose a Suzuki for yeah. Silverstone. I would choose a Ducati for Snetterton. So there are tracks that Thruxton. I don't know. Whatever doesn't eat tires. I don't know. Uh, Andy Owen won on the old Honda there, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Hickman always does well. Hickman does very well yeah. there. So we'll give BMW that yeah. one. Yeah, but yeah. So the, so there are. There's obviously certain. It is all. It is only tarmac. But there's also so many variables within that. The shape of the tarmac is obviously the main one that's obvious, but also the type of the tarmac and mental, the undulations and how a bike reacts to it. So like we're talking about the Suzuki, which if you look at where that's gone well, it's typically the flatter circuits. So whether that's 
um, a thing or whether that's just happens to be that's what's happened because the riders are better or worse at certain tracks. But if you see it on the tracks with undulations, it's not gone quite as well. Yeah, but then arguably that Zuki, Kyle Ride and Bradley Ray absolutely pissed off at Donington. Um, and it was a Kyle ride that he led there. it. Was no, yes, they were led it. They broke down. It was just like Jesus. Wait, it's it's it's. Well, there's no there's no. Donington has elevation change, but it doesn't have big undulations. Not... Right, massive difference. So I'm talking yeah. like something like Alton or Brands or something Carmel, with big yeah, yeah. big dips and hollers and that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. No. No. That's, so it's... there's different, but that could be just coincidence. I'll soon find out. It's my, it's one of those like why does the sun rise and sunset? You can guess, but no one really truly find out. It's like put a pin in it kind of thing, isn't it? Are you were gonna start. I was watching Teen First Dates last night. There was someone saying all that. It's so funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, is, is that, that a new a program? Question. Yeah, well, it was the the girl was on it. And she's she's really daft, and she was just she was it just she made me think of it, and she was going, "I believe the world's flat because when you look out of a plane, it's flat in it." <laughs> you just made me think about it. <laughs> I'm a daft blonde on <laughs> telly. There you go, champion. <laughs> But yeah, there there is there is horses for courses. It does. Yeah. I do think it makes a difference. But um, yeah. you just never know till you get in that first race. But like you say, I I like I was saying, I love to be proven wrong and to be like get it done. So uh, uh, you're one of the perfect people to ask this question, although you don't have experience of uh, pure road racing. But obviously all the experience of getting to learn to ride the Ducati in two years of riding it. And it's just been announced that Michael Dunlop's going to be taking it to the mm -hmm. Northwest and also the TT. Um, we'll come back to it afterwards, but the Ulster's being cancelled, which yeah. was obviously oh, a disappointment. About. We'll come back to that. But it's first, be a of, long all, podcast. This uh, first <laughs> of all, the, the, how do you think Michael's going to do specifically at the TT? Take, change the question. Take Michael off it. How do you think the bike's going to do? Well, the bike's fast. Yeah, the bike's fast. And it's probably one of the stiffer, more racy bikes. And given that it would seem that stockers can get very close now to the times of super bikes, I think you also need something compliant. So it might be a bit less compliant than some of the other bikes. So I think it potentially might be a bit more of a handful mm. on a less flat surface, which are, an actual road is less flat by, by miles. Mm. So... I don't know because I've never ridden it on a road surface. But from what you've but learned, from what right, I, yeah. But from, from riding it, I know it's a very stiffly, it's a tight bike, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, I so you what, think it'll be silly. quite, it's going to be difficult I think for it, Michael. Yeah, I think it's one of them where when it's perfect, it'll be amazing. Because yeah. he's going to go on Dunlops. So I guarantee he's always been a Dunlop man for has he? through. And if, he if he is, they're also a very stiff carcass yeah. as well. So that's, that's stiff that's on good. stiff. That's what I mean. It's yeah. going to be uh, because you tried Metz's EDM. You went to Metz's for a bit, but you you stick with what you know, and you mm -hmm. stuck with Dunlops. But like you say, that's going to be even. But I mean, he stiff but, on stiff on stiff on stiff. Michael yeah. was due to ride it two years ago anyway, so At he came the end in nineteen. So the pi yeah. the pictures that have come out are the pictures from two years back. So yeah. it's not like a new thing. Yeah, hmm. I think it's just a rollover because obviously this is the first year we're going to get the roads back. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so. Hmm. And going on you know, to the Ulster Grand Prix news, obviously disappointed. We kind of heard it was all like sort of positive uh, rumours going on and I think kind of built everyone's yeah, hopes we, up really. We, we were getting told a lot of good information. It was like, oh, and we were saying, yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. And it's we, we were actually just discussing beforehand and it's it's unfortunate. The, the biggest, up, like as a rider, and for, like for me as a rider, I'm generally gutted, but the most outstanding point that I'm gutted about is the fact that it's the beginning of to lose to lose news. something as big as the Ulster. Yes, is is big. It's damn it, very damaging. That's yeah. that's the tip. Like no point sugarcoating or trying to go around it. It's it's. I've always seen road racing. It's always a three headed dragon because it's mm -hmm. it's the the Northwest, the TT, and then you've got the the Ulster Grand Prix, and yeah. then obviously there's other great events. Obviously piggyback. Well, yeah, the term is piggybacking it. You yeah. know what I mean. But yeah, they're the to, internationals, aren't they? And everything's sort of off the back of them three. And of course it is. Yeah. The, the Ulster, to lose the Ulster is like That's I've it. never raced the roads, but I've, I've you know been to the Ulster and I love it, and it yep. it's amazing, and it's just such a shame. And, and I, as well, I think it's a really nice middle ground between the Northwest and the TT as well, yeah. Yeah. as in it's more short circuit esque, but it's not so triangular as the northwest yeah. yeah and it's not so long and 
difficult as the TT. It's, so it's, it's kind of that middle ground between the two. That you, I couldn't agree more. They've both got huge attributes. But I tell you what, the most I'm gutted thing about is how my rumour didn't kick off properly. That Faye Hill was going to buy it out. I started that rumour and unfortunately it didn't get any traction and Faye hasn't... <laughs> well, yeah, did, she, Faye, did she but, hear it? It's probably You probably needed pro- her to probably, hear it. But I get on a lot of people's nerves a fair bit. So she probably was, was thinking about it and heard me <laughs> do it and go, no, I'm actually going to back out. But Faye, if you are listening, uh, please reconsider So is buy. it a completely done deal? Well, it, when is it like been, off the table, off the table? You know, oh, no, no, I just think it's just not talks. this year. It's definitely not this year, but there's talks. Definitely that, not this year. Definitely yeah, not this right. year. It's been but, canned for 2022, which was the event the century. Has, it was going to be the century year. This one. <laughs> and but, what was the? And what was like the? The end of it was it's looking the reasoning funding fin- finance. Yeah. So, by reading between the lines of what the news has been released, it's a fact of. It's it's due to funding. I think uh, they also was looking for funding from the Irish, the Northern Irish government. But as you can imagine, they've played the card safe and said we can only really there's only enough money in the pot to fund one event. Now they've gone down the northwest route because it actually draws more in. Yeah. For the tourism, and I, you can see why. I can totally, yeah. un, I can totally understand. The northwest is more commercialised. It's in more city centre rather than the hills of Belfast. But it's just unfortunate that it's just not enough money. In, in the pot mm. to, to run both events and that is the nature of it but the, the, they're very careful with the words that you're, they're using because they're saying it's looking very damaging towards the future of the Ulster they haven't said that's it for the Ulster to write a room that's it. but basically what they're saying is knee cheddar <laughs> so they needed a big sponsor they, put like a private company yeah, or something yeah, to, yeah that's yeah. it and the rumour mill saying it's like 800 grand <laughs> right. oosh 800 grand, that's what I like. These are the things that you can imagine. The other bloke down the road will tell you, ah, it's 20 quid. And then the other bloke will tell you, it's a million quid and then blah, 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 blah. I've I've got a few uh, Patreon questions to to ask. But just beforehand, we've got some... Have you ever done the scales game? Nah, but I did. I was down at Matt's every day and I sucked at it because we tried it. Oh, really? Yeah, and he's like, he's so good at it. What did do you know? What he, well, every scale is different. I'm just fair. glad Matt's you know alive. I've been trying to ring him. If you're listening to this, Matt, I'm just glad you're alive. Son. Do you know what Matt got? Wait, like double what I got. I don't know. It was Shut honestly, up. he was so. I've got little tiny hands. Do you have a, I what, couldn't oh, do trying to bash. What I'll have it? a go, but I'm flipping. What was it? Oh, no, what did that bloke get at the show? Seventeen point five. Uh, the best. Did he have the humongous best, hands. I don't know. The best rider that we've had um, on the show was Skinner. So. Well, Hickman got 13.5. Johnny Ray got 13.6. I, I think, think I did Brad... about eight Hold really? on. on Matt's one, yeah. <laughs> I got right with the hands. <laughs> Hold on. When Rory Skinner banged out a 15, 14 or uh, something. He was, yeah, he's the highest like rider from the show. But yeah, someone at the show got 17.5, which is ridiculous. The um, Our patron, Sam, or Sam Ward, he got 15. 15. So. Comfortably as well. You might have topped the Loughborough thing, but... I'm definitely let's... doing the grip test very well. <laughs> yeah, go on. So, uh, oh, nine and a half. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you, can, you can't never tell. Like, but <laughs> let's go for uh, Patreon questions. We've got quite a few. <laughs> All that work that you can do. He, he's looking henched. Really? You are looking henched. Chris's changed shape. I've got, to, I've got, to, I've got, Chris I've, shape. I've got to ask a question. Now that you're getting henched up, does your like Mickey look smaller? <laughs> I'm not on roids, you know. No, I don't know, but does it look smaller? You know what I mean? It's like, at the end of the day, In it's comparison. like... comparison. No, no, think about it. Like, a bodybuilder started off life as, like, quite small. They hit puberty and the... the, the bodybuilders got... have small bellies because of the roids, though. Is that a thing? No, no, yeah, but this is, is my real? argument. Is that true? That, nah, but you see, but at the end of the day, you hit puberty, you're a skinny little rake and your Mickey's only so far, in it. Aye. And then the bigger they get, the smaller it's looking. What's so the is point, that looking, what's the is point that of taking sp- drugs to make your winky smaller? I've never, ever... Why would you do that? I definitely won't be doing that. <laughs> no, but matter. surely you, surely you get hench so that people look at your winky, and then when you get it, it dis- out, more this is the yeah, most polite you know I mean? version of saying knob and anyway, my winky. <laughs> uh, right, we'll go. So you haven't answered that. Does it look bigger or smaller? What, what's, oh. going, what's the personal? You know what's, what's going on. Some of the kids. Have you been training it? He's doing oh. cock push-ups. Some of the kids that are. T- <laughs> what's that off tenacious, tenacious day? Yes. <laughs> Some of the kids uh, that are teach watch chasing the raisins. So I'm going to swerve that question if you don't mind. Okay. Fair uh, we'll go. Um, I'll answer. Paul it. Bennett. It's probably he's looking smaller, kids. Uh, w- uh, will you try and copy Chrissy's green light st- starting attack position? How's the dog? I don't get the first one, but how's the dog? What's your starting position? 
green light starting at tactics. By the way, we've got to mention, you have like a super duper mega mega fan who's a mega fan of this show as well, Sheila. She's got a che- chasing the race and tattoo, but she literally run uh, runs over to me. Shirley. Shirley even. Sorry, mm. sorry, Shirley. They, Jesus. She literally runs over to me and goes, how's Christian? It's like, I don't live with him. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, he's been on the show a few times, but I don't check in on him regularly, dear. But uh, she is a super a fan of Chasing the race and tattoo? Generally Has she does. also got a, an hidden tattoo? Someone had an yes, hidden that tattoo. That'll be her. It's but, I'm not, be her. I'm, but I'm not sure if it was real or not. I wasn't. Well, she's left She's left a comment, so we'll go. Okay. Yes, is there something up with her. the dog? Hey, is there something up with the dog? Someone Tiny the Terrier. Tiny the, the Terrier. No, there's the not. Dog. Oh, she, she's fantastic. Good. She's got it on Instagram. And, yeah. Yeah. What <laughs> yeah. is it? Give the plug. Tiny the Terrier. Tiny the Terrier. Yeah. That's in the river. We'll go. That's the river. We know the river. We'll go. <laughs> no, <laughs> other people might not know the river. Touche. Sorry, this is a global show. So exactly. We're not I just in the northeast. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go. Uh, no, the, the dog's mint. Honestly, she, she always had bad breath though. She eat. Yeah, because she eats shit all the time. So she smells like shit all the time. Lovely. I know. Uh, Shirley Bimpson. Hi, Christian. So pleased you're staying in BSB. How's it going with the Bill Base team? Are you happy with your progress so far? Looking forward to watching you kick ass this year there with a are. thumbs up and a, a trophy and a bike. Kiss, kiss. So I think it was more. Yeah, how's it going? You haven't really actually started. Yeah, yeah, haven't, yeah so it's, I haven't started anything yet. So, but every, so everything so far has been mint. Um, yeah, class. Yeah. Uh, Sam Higginson. Christian, do you think you'll have any big rivals this season? And if so, Will it be Sykes or Brooks? <laughs> glad you glad you're staying in BSB. Good luck for the season. I think that's like a weird question. Do you feel like you do you feel like given the position, you kind of wanna specifically beat the PBM lads or are you not kind of there's like thirty rivals out there. And... Exactly. It'd be daft to focus on one or two people because that's just ridiculous because it you would only just is any right it's on worse the... on yourself yeah. if you do that. But I do want to say because um, I did an interview, and um, in the interview, I said about how I, was, I felt like I was going to leave. I was I wanted to leave BSB because I felt yeah. very unloved, and I can't remember exactly the quote, but it was sort of taken a little bit out of context. Mm. What I meant was by the more inner circle of the. BSB community. So I think the quote was along the lines of nobody cares if Christian Eden gets a ride in BSB. What I meant by that was, and I had elaborated to the person who did the interview, but what I meant by it was, for example, all the other riders, and I'd be the same if if somebody didn't get a ride, I don't care because I'm only looking after my own. I would go, oh, that's a shame, but that's as far as it goes. Yeah. You know, the teams don't really care because they'll always have another rider. The management of British Championship don't necessarily care because they'll always have a championship and they'll always have more people. So what what I meant by the comment um, that I got a lot of comeback from in a nice way, but what I meant by the comment was within the BSB community, I felt very unloved. I was just almost like cast aside and just felt so out in the cold that I've gone, I've come from this paddock that you think is so close and so together. And then within a within a heartbeat you're sort of like completely out in the cold and as much as people are still my friends and stuff they're of course looking after their own jobs and their own security and i totally get that because i'd be exactly the same but to be on the outside of it was quite an eye-opener and be like flipping yeah. heck you know like you, you don't actually realize like how nobody's irrelevant, there to help you how irrelevant you, you are, are to the whole uh-huh. uh, circus until you're like either injured or out yeah, out of it. exactly yeah, I, really talks I mean about that if, if yeah. you if you think like major majorly if you think like for example when tommy hill quit or when casey stoner quit if you want to go big big mm. nobody actually cares no, as in yeah. as in you're the gone show okay on. the but, show goes on yeah. you know like we've just had the first motor gp race with no valentino rossi i i didn't miss him one little bit i'm sure people did a little bit but you know like yeah, the, good... the show completely goes on and that's, that's, life, that's how it works so what i meant by the comment was that's how it felt and i was the one yeah cast out on the outside and um, what i think a lot of people who do support me really and do support me really well i got a lot of comments going we care and i care and so i didn't mean i, I think i have fantastic people who support me fans and bsb yeah. fans so yeah i hope people didn't think that i felt unloved in that respect because i do um i think oh, i've yeah. got mint fans but i think it, the quote was definitely taken out of context mm. i was a little bit disappointed with how it was headed yeah without yeah. without the bits either side of it you know what, th- to be fair i think that's why um platforms like this are uh, a much 
better way of having a, a proper conversation about yeah. something because you can elaborate and like say you've just spoke like two minutes about that and sort of ex- expanded yeah. where like Twitter where you've got like a uh-huh. few things and you've got to like make a point to get things and it's so easy for things just to get comp- but then the the add-on effects of that yeah. is like it then like annoys people and like and, mm-hmm. and it causes like things that just yeah you mean. can be called you can be if people can make an assumption on you by the way someone's written a, a, yeah, a an pe- article about you and yes they people... can't they can't put a quote in unless you've said it but they can cut the quote down into certain snippets which makes people... without the context it can completely change a sentence round or uh, something that you say and i've also done a couple of interviews and it's funny, it's, it's lately that it's been happening, but I, I've done a couple and they've really focused on, we'll do an interview that's an hour long and it's 50-50 split between two subjects and the article is 95 subject one and just Andy said this, which yeah. is quite frustrating because... Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, to be people, fair, the whole people thing's... People read what, what they want to read. And it's also, yeah. there was a lot of clickbait. So there was one that I was in, mm-hmm. in and they, they kept putting out the clickbait sort of things that I'd said and it was really not what I wanted putting out but yeah once you've said it you can't take it back but it's so it's nearly impossible not to say a, a group of sentences without one of them in between if you take it on its own to not sound wrong mm. yes difficult really difficult and obviously as racers we get anything now in social media people are so quick to judge and so quick to make a snap decision love him hate him you know her them whatever you know it's just like completely yeah it's in the moment it's good or bad. It's one or the everything's so black and white. And, and f- from being on yeah. the inside, weird. So exclusive to chase the race, and from now on, which is great. <laughs> from being on the inside yeah. of that and like experiencing that, you can then like sort of look at like say someone like Casey Stoner, who like most people hated because of what the scene of him in the press, mm-hmm. and you think to yourself, is they that actually know. do I actually not really not like him as a person or? Are all the clippets that might have been taken out of context yeah. has painted this picture mm-hmm. because it gets more like views and more clickbait. clickbait. So uh, am I basically being fed all of, mm-hmm. t- and it's so easy done. Like so, yeah. It's yeah. So I, so I just wanted to clear that up. Yeah, so we went a long no, way about way. it, but I just wanted to. No, no, yeah. fair, that's what this I is have about, great. Yeah. I have great fans, and yeah. it's mint. Quick, yeah. uh, Jacob Cuthbertson, have you done any testing on the Suzuki? If so, what's your initial thoughts and how different to the uh, Ducati? Good luck this season, and I'm sure you're going to smash it. Obviously, you haven't yet. No, so I'll, ring, I'll ring in with a snippet for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll just be... For the next you, pod. Yeah, Anything you'll be on, bait I'll, be on, yeah. I'll be on next month. <laughs> <laughs> next time you can't get someone around. Where's Eden? Where's he in tonight? To be fair, we've been trying to get this sorted for... It wasn't a last-minute thing. You're literally too factory for us. We're to, yeah, we've been trying to get this sorted for a while. Uh, I was uh, Julian Rose... I was quite surprised by Christian's reaction to what happened with PBM. From what I've seen... Of the sport, the rider is always the most dispensable element of the team. Bike racing seems to be the opposite of four-wheeled racing, where continuity is favoured. Do you think it has become a rider? Do you think it is because a rider is more important in the performance equation that teams will change them so readily? That's quite a deep and interesting mm. question. It is a real difficult one to answer. There's so many reasons why teams have to choose certain riders, like. A lot of it's the team situation. So some teams need riders who bring budget. Some teams can afford to pay riders. So it's different. Someone's, some teams want the big name to pull in the big sponsor. So it's self, what is it? Generating, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So it's, they're all in different scenarios. It's a difficult one. Yeah, really. Uh, one of the best bits of advice I ever got, and at the time it was bloody wounding, right? And it was the first time. Um. Basically, it was there's always like he said to her straight in my face before I got on his bike. He went, "Remember, Dominic, there's more jockeys and horses mm-hmm. in motorcycles." And at the time, I went, "Holy!" F-, and like that was, it, it came across very malicious. You know what I mean? But it's only now it's like you know what you've got to take you, you've got to take advice that you want to, and you portray how you, you want to perceive it, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Anything, Jesus, it's only now it's starting to come to light. Anything, everything that we just talked about is very much that. And as a rider, it's terrifying because it's people see us. And another bit of advice, <laughs> I think someone should better take notes of this, is that motorcycle racing feels like the only sport where you go to the circus and we pay to be a part of the act. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, but I'm, it's, but I'm, it's... I'm, I've, I see that two ways. So, yeah. 
it's a dangerous position to be in. So I'm I'm fortunate enough to be a, a, it's my profession, and it has been for years. So I'm rightly I'm so to see it that way. However, the question then the question is, would I then race if it was costing me money? The answer is yes, but I would do motocross. So I'll do something that I enjoy more yeah. or it's more accessible to me or that's what I'll do. So th- the truth is, is that we all start racing not to become a champion. We do it because we're kids or we we've it. got into it in whatever part of our stage of our life, but we've got into it because we enjoy it and it's it's mint. And then some of us get to a point that you're fortunate enough that it then becomes your job and you can often forget that the, the the start point of why you did it mm-hmm. so yes we riders are 90 percent of riders pay to perform yeah. in the circus however you're enjoying that performance so it's yeah oh, i'm no, kind yeah, of on no, the fence with it you know like it's a it's a daft thing for me to say but like would i ride for a team for nothing well yeah so, you know, if Steve Hickens listening to this, you know, didn't say no, that, but, but, no, you, but, but you know what I mean? You get to a point where you shouldn't expect expect it because you started out because you enjoy it. It's, it's, a weird, yeah, no, I, it's a weird thing. I totally agree with what you're saying. But then argumentally, I'm sitting here listening to this going, you deserve to be paid. No, 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 I know, I know, no, no, I know, no, 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 I, I know it's very difficult, but I agree with what you're saying, stuff like that. But a lad at your level, you should be getting paid. Can I just jump in? You know, can I just jump in? No, here you can't. Shut up. <laughs> and say it's um, it's very easy to equate it to other sports and like see the sort of inequality and the unfairness in it. But if you take that out of the equation, like, the, like for example, this year is like I'm happy to like sell everything i own and put everything Mm -hmm. into to like sort of chase my dream which is what i'm going to do this year um which is amazing by the way yeah and it's like in if if i could be doing pretty much anything in the world for like 2022 like i'm actually getting to like have the opportunity to do exactly what i would want to do yeah so it's nothing i'm not doing that to make money or to like the money thing's got and i don't think a lot of people understand like the that side of things i I remember hearing james ellison on uh it would be like talking to fred and it was probably like about eight years ago Mm -hmm. and he was at the time he was just saying like uh people think you do this for money and it's like absolutely not and at the time i think he was living in like a motor home and whatever yeah but like sort of do do i don't know it's difficult to say like it racing bikes i think you get like a sense of fulfillment fulfillment yeah. fulfillment oh. out of it that like God sort I. of takes a hole and like for you doing the tt and stuff it's at no point are you doing it to get paid an um, amount or whatever you're doing it because it's like your life you absolutely love it so yeah, it you're is, living your life aren't you it is unfair when you compare it to like any but pretty much any other sport and i totally get that and it, it, it is true but um i'm kind of not bitter about that even though like compared to the sports, it, it, you sort of should be. It, I'm it, not. It, 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 but, you, but you shouldn't, shouldn't. So obviously, the the easiest one to equate it to is football, and they get X thousand thousand pounds a week. But there's also so many more fans. But also, it has to work to within the money that's in the pot. The only the only way I look at it is, yes, I would ride for free. Is is the comment that I'm going to say that you, that people take out of context and just just pull that quote out? Well, that, that's what this episode's going to be called. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Yes, I'll ride for free. Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but but I but the other thing that I also have is I have an element of self worth that I can only equate to my peers. So yeah. if I equate myself, and we've spoke about it before, just not long back about my current situation and one rider was picked over me and I said, but even he's gets paid more and was worse. So that I don't understand. So I see myself within a with it on, on a scale and I know where I fit on that, sit on that scale. So I want to be remunerated in proportion to people doing that sort of job. And it's the same in any job. No matter whether, no matter what your job is, yeah, I think it's exactly the same. Just to jump, just to jump back to the um, Brooksy thing as well. It's very much on. uh, It's a whole thing, and very much on past experience. And obviously, as a double British Superbike champion, like for example, uh, Rossi would be like massively out earning everybody, even when he was like tenth and fifteenth, because of his past experience. Uh So, kind of like once you get to like 
being double British Superbike champion, even if you if even if your form isn't as as strong, it, you kind of you do uh, carry like a bigger weight. And you also have a you have a name that you carry around with you. Like, let's play complete like devil's advocate. If if Keo decided he came back, he he would probably really struggle now. But you get brass. It would get brass exactly, yeah, because he would be a crowd puller and people would Does be rooting for him. Yeah. And exactly, yeah. that D- guy Martin would probably be an even bigger one, yeah, huge, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's that's this is a completely different flip side, but yeah, it's not just it's not just about talent wise where you sit, mm-hmm. but but you uh, and but, you... I, but I remember years back, I don't, I don't know if I've told you boys this story, but years back, um, when Philip Neal was finding I was staying with the with the Taz team. And he was talking, I think it was it was either Giuliano or Haslam or might have been Sylvan Gintoli. One of those three was gonna sign up. And they were gonna get 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 mega books compared to what I thought was what I was on. So I offered him a deal that I would ride for nothing, but if I beat my teammate, I want his wage. Nice. But he didn't take me up on the deal. Oh really? And so that would have been with okay. Davide Giuliano, who did a round and a half. I would have been quids in. <laughs> <laughs> he did, did after like winning uh, did he win but, I, but, I, but, but my point to Philip was I believe I'm better than any of those boys that you are going to put next to me yeah so therefore I want the same yeah you want the reward so I'm and I'm happy to put my own neck on the line to prove that so I'll ride for no but if I beat the my teammate yeah. in the championship, then I want what they got. At the, at the end of the day, the, the which mo- would have been cool. But then I, can you enough. imagine I would be on the slowest motorbike going? Can you imagine if we got to the last <laughs> round together and it was me and him like battling for whatever in the championship? I'd be like, murp, murp. that's it, boys. My bike's doing, broke. They're, they're, no, it's not. <laughs> they're doing the tire pressure check for you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the, the the market value, the, the market kind of. Dis- dictates the price uh, the, yeah that's the what i mean in terms so there's of, a sliding a whole, scale yeah and it's a yeah. whole picture in terms of like the money that's brought in from the sport mm-hmm. how big the sport is in the country yeah. like how well it's um publicized on tv all that type of stuff um so yeah yeah it's one of them um oh, oh we're boring you there thomas <laughs> <laughs> fell asleep in the corner okay. i know sorry what we're talking about that? <laughs> uh, we'll go, um last few <laughs> patreon questions i think we've done done all of those we had james williams does he feel less pressure now he's not at pbm who's been the best Ooh. teammate he's had in bsp that's a good question it's a different i would say like in terms of maybe not the expectation you're putting on yourself but the expectation from others um obviously you're talking about like the horses type of thing yeah. being on pbm you kind of there is a level of expectation which is definitely you don't have that level of expectation from the spectators yeah. on the hawk bike uh, do you feel that do you feel like a bit more freer I, well i think you hit the nail on the head that that intrinsically it's the same because you put the same pressure on um extrinsically yes um i definitely felt the weight of expectation two years back and mm. yeah I, I think now i'm i think my mindset's a bit different anyway and i'm, I'm after two very good years of fighting for the championship, I'm more than confident of my abilities. Whereas previously, yes, I was confident of my abilities, but you still want to have the results to have backed that up. Yes. Otherwise, you're just a dreamer. Do you know what I mean? Like you Within you, you believe it, but that's no good unless you've showed it. Now I've had two years of showing it, so I know it. There's just sort of a job to be finished. So it's, it's, it's a different... Within myself, I'm sort of happier and... Yeah. So yeah, from the outside, there's definitely less. People are probably uh, talking about me less, and but that's fine with me. I've always liked being sort of a dark underdog, horse and underdog, yeah. so that's Good. fine. Do you know? Ed, I know the whole relationship didn't sort of end uh, the best, like the whole PBM it, split it, thing. Well, it didn't end badly. That's not so. It's kind of a um, yeah. It, it the the it didn't end badly. It's just a shame that it sort of petered out. It's kind of yeah. it's almost weird because I left the the final round. This is one of the biggest shames for me is I left the final round. I, I had massive crash at Brands when uh, Danny Buck and collected me and I ended up really bashed up. Thankfully okay, but really bashed up. And because I was continuing with the team, so I thought I never said a proper goodbye to everyone. You know, if that was the last, if I knew that was the last time I was going to work with them, there would have been more of a of a send off yeah. that I could have whereas all I did was go I didn't I, I just went to them and went listen I feel groggy as like I'm just going to go home I'll see you over the winter you know like then we'll we'll arrange next year sort of thing with the team you know I was yeah, like yeah. 
it wasn't the thank you very much for everything yeah, 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 yeah and yeah, that yeah. that's that was a shame because that would have been really nice and and we had two fantastic seasons together so that was that was such a shame because i would have liked that and then the rest of it it did just sort of peter out into this sort of radio silence that just it, it just sort of went quiet it's just, it was a shame yeah that's, got, that's all it was it was a shame we, we don't we haven't ended on a on a bad note it was just a shame how everything ended up that's yeah. all yeah i know and, what you mean and obviously yes yeah. yeah, saying that but uh in a sense i presume you kind of look back on the uh two years with uh birdies a uh, birdies lot and like sort of um kind of grateful to have like those two years mm -hmm. with it with the team and i got lots of good experiences now do you f <laughs> by the way like the, quick, the most quickly success. very quickly best teammate was michael lovey you missed that bit ah, yeah, yeah um best um riding for like one of the biggest most established teams most successful teams do you feel was it what you kind of expected beforehand and do you know what i'm saying it's funny because i've ridden for so many teams now throughout different uh types of motor motorbike racing and now in bsb i've been i've done uh like halsell team uh taz team pbm you know so now with hawk so it, sort of going through them and all of them you find they have their strengths and weaknesses if you could sort of pick and choose the the really good bits from different places then but yeah there's 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 all the teams i think do think that i've been with have certain elements that they do better than other teams, but there's, they all have elements that they do things mm -hmm. worse at. I guess that's good. Good for like definitely. The, yeah. What's been your favourite livery you've ridden for? Good. We're going to go back to Taz because we, again we yeah. haven't spoke yet about Hutchie's new TT beautiful. bike. Lovely that. Nice. Right. That was. Like, we have to hit on that because that is just the most beautiful. Be and we didn't even hit on the fact that Hutchie's now signed back up because I spoke to Hutchie not long back, and he was like. I ain't got anything. And even when I messaged him yesterday when the news came out or whenever it was, um, I think it was yesterday, and he was like, oh, it was lastminute.com. Yeah, Jesus. I just thought I, I was speaking to him not long ago and he yeah. was looking at something completely different. Yeah. I've just thought about that now. He so never that, that bike balls. looks beautiful. So, yeah, in terms of a, a team that can put out a beautiful motorbike, <sighs> like, I mean, Philip Neal loves a Pantone sort of, you know, like I can't imagine what he's like picking a color for his living room like that thing must be covered in dulux like testers <laughs> he loves the right color you know like if it, it in every light in every what's it but he always puts out a bike that looks immaculate so immaculate I, like they're beautiful i was so that's definitely answered the question for that because on the last pod we we're talking about what's your favorite livery and yours is is it still the fs3 or is the milwaukee the new bike? one well, the new fs3 yeah we're talking about bsb liveries for this year and we're just kind of that gas monkey one for uh i think gas it's nice monkey for me for t yeah, yeah it does look good it does look good i'm a big fan of green nice. though yeah. I, I like the green obviously the the hawk racing suzuki is the best one <laughs> but i do actually quite well. like i do also quite like the um the honda one it's quite nice. I can't even think mm. what the Honda. Oh yeah, the white one. The yeah, red one. Yeah, they've yeah, gone yeah, back nice. to that. Uh, yeah. The cows at the FS3 one's nice. Not if it, the mat. If it hadn't already been done at Worlds once. Yeah. And I think yeah, and I think it it's a great and little. I think it's a great one round special livery. Mm -hmm. But not for the season. Yeah, I know nah. what you mean. The, um, mm. Personally. Have you ever seen... Oh, fair enough. Taste, oh, is, taste is so personal. We're going right? to take that as a clip it yeah. and then just bang it on. <laughs> have you seen Bob Collins? It, he races like club yeah. racing. He used to do like... Uh, so he had that racing. Honda livery thing, didn't he? Yeah, with but it? all the boots and the helmet, the yeah. leathers, everything to match. Like, he's got pink dates. Yeah, it looks absolutely class. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. You know there's some real nice bikes on the grid. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, happened? TT... The, like Hutchie back at the TT is a big is a big big thing. I'm I'm so glad that he got sorted because he is just a charger. Like he's been through to hell and back. I need to to keep racing. So fair play to him. Mm. What Despite, do you know? Like obviously he's super successful around the TT. Like when when we've been speaking to people on the podcast and like just when I'm speaking to friends, it's all like sort of Hickman and Dean, all mm -hmm. the sort of things. There's nothing to say that like Touchy could can't be. Up you can't there. ever rule a man out because no. he's. Just he's got something in him. Thing, he's got something inside him that'll just will a, a, a switch. It'll flick, and then do you know what I mean? Mm. But he just doesn't ever stop charging, does he? he? Just when he finds that feeling, he just he's insanely good. He's and an actually, he had some really good rides on the stock bike last year in on the yam on yeah. the yam. Yeah, and I think he was pretty much the only yam on the grid. Mm. So I think it was probably tough at certain rounds to get the thing dialed in right and 
you know, so he, he's still a mint short circuit racer, not just yeah, not just a road rider. It's... So I don't know if actually he'll be doing some of the, They usually do some to get the eye in. So it'd be nice if even if we see that uh, that bike see, at some British rounds. Was it Steve Plater that said that he he did a talk show ages ago and he I remember him saying that a quiet hutchie is a dangerous hutchie. <laughs> No, you know what I mean, for mm. results. Mm. And every year that he's always turned up and just blitzed everyone is the year he's been quiet. And think about it, it's the first time he's appeared on the scene since the last round at Brands. No one's heard from that for that reason. So but... from from the roads, you've got the... Obviously, you've got Dean and Hickey, and yeah. then you've sort of got Michael and Hutchie. Who, like, I would say they're the four sort of like really big hitters. Yeah. Mm. Who's number five? I, I... Kind of put Connor Cummins and Davy Todd in with them. At the Would moment. you? So that's so that's what I was going to say. What's the next group? I don't. I personally wouldn't. Connor maybe. Davy's not done enough yet. I don't think. But obviously, <laughs> but we've had two years off, so he's, he's missed two years of development. He's done a bit. But of he's stock certainly fouls getting there. He's, in he's terms definitely of... sharpened himself up. Doing a fair bit of supermoto and motocross. He's the same. You know, he's always out. He's always. But obviously, you're the you're the man in the know. So who do you think is that? Who's in that group that's going to take it to them? The four, what I mean is the four established. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about big bike here. Yeah. Yeah, but it kind of echoes through the classes in a way. Well, like Lee Johnson, yeah, yeah, you'd say. Like, yeah, Lee Johnson obviously is going to be but see, really Johnson, good on the smaller bikes. Lee Johnson on the big bike, he's a 130 man. Jamie Coward's a 130 man. Um, like, what Connor about McGuinness? Cummins. What about Connor? What about Glenn? Glenn? Well, Connor Cummins is a 132 man. Hillier is a 132 man. McGuinness is a 132. Davo is a 131.9, I believe, off the top of my head. But I really think he's going to blend well with that yam. Very, very well. The 133 people are, I think, Hutchie. Hutchie. You see, Guy Martin's a 132, man. But mm. a 33, Hutchie's a 133. But then a 34 is Harrison. Yeah. 35 is Hickman. And you just sing it. It's getting mental. And then you just start putting it. You see, then Bruce Anstey, the enigma, who... Well, because is he, he back is, racing? He was, well, I think he'll be back on the 250 Classics. Right. I think the big bikes are because he's been battling with cancer again. God love him. And um, he's a 132 man on the Hondas. But you see, then D um, Davey Todd's a 131. Yeah. Anything in... Yeah, Davey was super impressive at the last... Well, that was only a second year, wasn't it? That was the exactly. second year he, there on the That's press. what I mean. It's a shame for him that he got, like, the break probably for his career, came at almost the worst time. He was on that big ascendance through, yeah. you know, through didn't, wasn't he quicker than Hickman in his second year? I think he was right about yeah. the same. He would have been... The same. Be, I, I give, think Davey was... To be fair, quicker. though, Hickman in his second year was, like, plagued with mechanicals, but a fair point. But then, like like you say, Davey did a full year of IRRC, which is yeah. international road, but he was on a super bike instead of a stocker. Mm -hmm. But then he'd think, I, like... I personally fancy Davey to make that bridge. That, I wouldn't be surprised jump, if, he's, yeah. if he's the sort of... Uh, the next one to come through yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. interesting though. it'll be I, interesting I, 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 the think... thing is with two years out it's going to be really interesting isn't it because we just don't know we've mm -hmm. we've never had a break like that even in well, even, even in the shorts it's been at yeah, least I... we've had racing whereas you guys haven't had racing that that is no I couldn't agree more I just think Hick, Hickman is the modern day David Jeffries yeah until like you know David Jeffries he was just the untouchable you mm -hmm. know the, the out of out of his skin rider that was calm and safe and off he went you know and obviously you know he had an incident out, out of his control yeah, point, yeah. out of his control but it's like everyone does say it time and time again even McGuinness says it time and time again it's a bit like if he kept going he would have kept on going mm -hmm. we think Hickman is just on that air of confidence and he just think off you go son and you think it's almost like a battle for second <laughs> and I mean no no it is and I'm not mean that malicious way and it's it's just what's kind of... Jamie Coward on because obviously he was Jay... the fastest man on a Yamaha was he yeah, still is 130 mile an hour man on a Yamaha stocker. And then you think Alan, the OMG team, you know, the mm -hmm. rich energy lads are going to be turning up on two superbike R1s. Which is Davo and Hillier. Davo and Hillier. Yeah. Now, Hillier, he's he's in the similar camp to. He's an enigma Bruce as well, Anster. isn't he? He's yeah, just... he just tips up. He's, he's pissing around the desert at the Dakar, you know. He's been racing training. in du Abu Dhabi or Dubai this weekend. Sam Sunderland won, and I know that Hillier was out racing. Doing yeah, it was it. a qualifying He's race. In that, yeah. like, Hillier's normally got an enduro bike. He's an absolute animal. And then you've got Dave on the other side of the world spinning around getting a suntan, like, you know, just smashing tyres, you know. These lads, like, I tell you what. That's not good for the environment. Yeah. <laughs> 
for anyone that's listened to the I whole actually, thing, we have to bookmark it. I, I, I generally don't believe they'll have a green party in Australia for some reason. I, I generally find can that hard call, to believe. Can we call this podcast Greenpeace? <laughs> Greenpeace. Get it done, son. There you go. Get it done. But um, no, I just think, you know, it's... <laughs> I think I think the most talented <laughs> rider out there is almost going to be Davo, you know. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, you stick that man on any bike, he'll go quicker. Mm. You know the horses, of course. Thing you put him on a Norton, he banged out a one thirty one. You put him on a Honda, he'll bang out a one thirty two. You know he's a, and he just turns up and just wee mm. off you go. You know it's like that. I I think I think Hutchie's. When, you know when he did them 133s on that Tyco bike? He was out of shape. Proper out of shape. If you watch that, he was riding like Dunlop used to ride. Mm. Dunlop calmed down. You know what I mean? He yeah. got smoother yet faster. But then Hutchie put he charged. You pick the word perfectly. That charging element. Yeah. And I just think charges. a hawk running anyone at the TT. Not that I know of. Because right. they were running no. the. Uh, he wasn't English. I didn't Lawrence. recognize Lawrence. Someone, yeah. Lawrence, New Zealand lad, yeah, and he, he newcomer, flying. Absolutely Kiwi. flying. Oh, okay, May, I mean maybe I didn't. I've not asked them about it. I do think they have plans for a couple at the at the northwest. But speaking of northwest, old news. That's new news again. James Hillier, uh, Hillier, Ellison. Yeah, He's that was re- announced today, wasn't it? Yeah. So they're back at it, which is good, isn't it? So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on because he hasn't re- He's been on the, the ambassador roles rather than. Is that the right term? Yeah, well, he's, he's sort be, of been be, helping out, hasn't he, with the with Bjorn Esmonds. He's team manager, time. I think, isn't he? For, is he? Uh, for team power man, slide. Power slide. slide that, uh, Clark. Yeah, Brad Clark. Name. Brad Clark, thank you very much. But even before that, he was working with Alan. Yeah. And then vice versa. So well, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. I mean, it's a, that's a big name to go to the Northwest. You know, James Ellison's, you know, Moto ex- GP. GP rider. You know, that's, that's no sort of small thing. So that's pretty cool. It'll be interesting to see how we get Talk, on. Uh, did you see the TT numbers have been handed out? The start numbers, not the seeded ones. Uh, does that mean you're seeded in every class? Every class, class. seeded. So I don't know where I'm going to sit. I hope I'm not 20 again. I reckon... How many get seeded? Top 20. 20. All right, okay. But because they've reduced the grids, I don't know if that's been... But then arguably, Crowey's 22 on the Super Sport, so it must be the top 20 again for the seed. But they're, right. they're, like, they're like a bit of a show at the TV and they'll just string that out a little bit longer. But Do you the... have the same number for every class then, or not? No, they can spin that round. So you could be five for the, for the thousands for the super twin or yeah, like, 12 for the twins. Yeah. And... It's, right. But you see, last last when I was seeded, it was twenty for all of them, which was ideal for stickers. It made, but if, it made you, but if you if you won, do you always start one? The mm. roads were not that different. No, no. So no, David, no, really? no, 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 no. It was no. always McGuinness used to always go first, didn't he? And then he used to. Hilly did it for a uh, while. did it for a while. But last time we were out, David Todd went off as number one on the Super Twins. Yeah, was that correct? But twins that sort correct. of one to itself, though, isn't it? But stock Superbike and Super Sport. Yeah, I thought they always kept the same, but I'm probably wrong. But you see, then the, the mad thing is, it, it doesn't matter on your lap times. You yeah. know, it's 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 that kind of thing because then it's a bit like, I don't know. I, I, not... I just hope I'm not twenty again. And you know what's going to happen? Well, you're you gonna hope come you're on the show 20, next you time. You're not twenty because you have to come through riders that you don't want to come through. You're pretty much, you know, like, like do you do you get to a point where you're like, you know, where you see the seeding? Will you be like, I know I'm going to catch that person, and therefore it might cost me time? Or do you not want to be twenty because? I don't see a progression being 20 again every year. Oh, so you I, want to see that you've moved I, up the ranks? I, I do. Right, you know, because right, right. every year I've gone there, I've gone for a better number and you're thinking, you know, I kind of, last... even if it's 19, I'm like... And and how, how is it picked? Them. It's up to the TT oh, organizers. It? It's not Sony. like a, what's your lap time? No, not at all. Not so, it's like, I think, I think, to be honest, I think what they'll do is, like, the TT have that beautiful situation of where they can make a show for themselves. Yeah. And I think they discuss it between themselves and speak to the riders where they want to go. I will be incredibly shocked if Hickman's not number 10 again. Yeah. But then they won't set off Harrison in front. If I was running... How, okay, I'll tell you what. You set off the TT group with the front runners. How would you... Where would you want to see riders? That's a good question. Same for you, Chrissy. One of your start. I would stick McGuinness off first. Just to yeah, I would. Because I think he's a, he's a good... Uh, the point is, in his his career now, he's probably a very good. It's, it's really wrong to call him a sweep. I don't mean him as a sweep, but you know, like the first man through, it's always good. It's good for the crowd to see McGuinness first, and yeah. that's the angle that I thought. And also, just yeah. he's like the it's he the knows he does it right. He's just yeah, it'd be nice to see the number one on like sort of leading yeah, the way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So 
All right, who? Okay, where would you put Hickman then? Because he normally goes off at ten, and it's a bit of a crowd pleaser. Makes a bit, of, yeah, makes a bit of a race for it. I think that's how it sounds. Yeah, good. I, I so think that... almost slightly back to front running almost works. So if you could go whoever out of the big four that you think is slightly going to be slightly slower, Contention. so fourth best first, and then third best, and then so maybe towards the end they end up somewhere together even though you're trying to keep them apart. So I guess from a health and safety point of view, which what I guess they're trying to do is keep people apart, yeah. then it doesn't work. Do you know from when you when you started 20th, obviously of that grid, unfortunately we lost Daley Matheson, who was, at the time, I think he was starting 18th or 16th or something. I think like. he, was he 19th? Was he one ahead of you? He was, he, he was one or two Nine. numbers ahead of he you. He was but... 19. He was number 19, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Of the people Jesus. that were the other riders, was there a few that you were like catching in every race that you were faster than? Yeah, so like in the in the senior race, it was it's a proper psychological boost. You know, that like that 10 second gap proper determines your race. So if it was off times, you would probably be, what, like around... Oh, would you expect it maybe like 15th or something? But, but you see, that's a good thing about the six lappers. Like I, like Derek Shields went off down the road at number 16. Yeah. I caught him on so the So you know lap. you've made 40 seconds. And you're like, fucking, this is fifth lap. And you yeah. did, and I'm like, fucking have one of them. And then Sean Anderson was 17 and you're thinking, this is, this is. <laughs> Do you want some? Like that, Do you want some? Oh, on it. No, but that's the thing though. But the second you see it, man, it's ideal. You just but put the gum shield I mean. in, so off you, you go. What I meant was by you saying you don't want to start 20th, surely there's like an optimum amount so like maybe like hickman being 10 is probably quite a nice thing because he knows there's only nine people to clear if he has to so if there is a bit of a traffic jam it's not a major one but he's also got that m mental boost that if he does start catching yeah. it's a nice thing isn't it yeah so it can work in your favor but it can also work to your detriment plus when you set off you've you've got a chance of like at, cat, at starting at 20 you've got a realistic chance of catching people and it's a nice feeling like real people in yeah. say if you went 10th and the the f after, meant... after a lap and a half someone passed you and then after you know another 30 seconds someone else passed you would that not that feel like no no feeling? but see i know but to be honest sam with that opposite now i think i'm starting to learn to tour people mm. oh, so get no 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 it, like because like, i've grown up on the isle of man and my f only racing for me is just catch a rabbit catch a rabbit so when someone even on short circuits past me it deflated us rather than going getting a bite on and looking through the turn i always looked at the back wheel if you look at the back wheel you immediately follow their mistakes rather than looking through and just trying to pass them back and I think I'm at that point now with the Isle of Man that I, I would I would beg Paul Phillips. If you're listening to this, Paul Phillips, I would love to go number one. I'm at that point now. I want to be number one uh -huh. solely because when people pass me, when people pass me, I will learn from it. Uh -huh. You know, it's it's and look, it happened for James Hillier when he put him in number one the it, following year. Jump. It just, poof, he went from like 27s to 30s. You mean for like almost two years on, so you 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 have a year of a learning year, what sitting on people's wheels when if and when they come through, and then the year after you're then a better rider because you've learned some stuff. Massively, yeah, massively. And for me, it's like I'm passing people. It's like, well, I'm learning at my rhythm. Yeah, that is not good enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, that don't, makes I, sense. I don't have that track time now. I need to be with people that are going, you know, and they're like right. I is mean, it, that, that is even... always interesting. Isn't it? Like when you do watch the Isle of Man and stuff, and you see number. 10 go past number six but then within a lap but then three laps later number six is still right on the back wheel of number 10 you're like that's precisely the point exactly <laughs> all of a sudden number six had it in their arsenal I'd, by the way number six if you're listening i don't know who you are that's michael fine. dunlop in it oh michael i'm sorry <laughs> no but you know what i mean i was yeah. just using it no but it is it, it's as it. in as in they had it within them yeah but they weren't able to uncork it on their own and then all of a sudden it's uncorked because they go oh actually that's how they're the tricks. Barbara and should get him himself over the TT, hitch the tow bar. <laughs> He'd be like, <laughing. laughs> Hector, <he'd> be <laughs> Hector, yeah. Um, well, that's the only way you learn is by like someone like John, he could he could go over there with no training, no nothing. Like Bruce, they just they just know the system and Yeah. Cause I, you, you repeat the same mistakes because you think it's fast. Yeah. Trying to break a habit in motorsport, it, in motorcycle in general, is the hardest thing because you think you're going quick until someone goes, that's actually And that's how the other thing, it. like, is it probably is really difficult because like from us as short circuit riders, we see people so often and we can learn things quite quickly because we can pick up on mistakes quite easily. Whereas you guys, especially at the TT, might not see someone for a long period of time. And if you do it, they might not be, they're probably not even running the same pace as you. So all you're trying to do is improve yourself. And we all know as racers, 
when we try and improve ourselves, all we do is bite the handlebars and nine harder and nine times out of the 10, you end up going slower because you're doing it rather than... I've got a really good question for you, right? You're, <laughs> if you put yourself in Glenn Irwin's shoes, what number would you want to start? That's a good one. Glenn could handle it. For your debut. And I've generally been serious, put him at number five. He could handle it. He He could. Mm-hmm. I think, like you say, years of short search, scratch and learn, and everything like that. He has got the right attitude towards the Alaman, mm-hmm. and he would, he would, off he go. As long as long as the weather's good this year, and like you get a good practice. I hope it pisses down because I'm feeling tasty. <laughs> <laughs> as you know what I mean? As long I'm as sitting get... there with slicks. I'm doing an Eden. <laughs> I'm gonna do an Eden through Glen Helen like that. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't see me on slicks around there, boy. <laughs> fuck it. No, fuck it. I tell you, that's only. T- I tell you what, if it's damp, I'm. I'm uh, fuck. It. It's gonna end this one day, but I don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> I got second. I was second quickest through Glen Helen because it was slightly damp. And the only person who got qualifying was Hickman. I was in front of Dean Harrison, Michael Dunlop, all of them. Because they were sensible and knew it was going to be dry. <laughs> and I went, this is practice. This is my moment. Come on a 127 brake horsepower ZX6. And I just went, fuck it. I'm off for a ride. And that's the thing. You, you, Have you you're not there to chase anymore. You don't see any lap yeah. times. There's no lap boards. When you just feel tasty, you know what? You go for a lick. And <laughs> off you go. Genuine question here, just because I don't know. But do you have a... like? Cause I rely on it so much. So on, when I'm racing, I've got my lap delta. So I'm basically racing myself. So I know every lap, whether I'm up or down on my yeah, personal best. Yeah, green and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, I, I have it as, do you have it as a green and red? Yes. Do you have the number as well? Yeah. Yeah. So I really focus on that number. So I'll look at, so Donington Park, I'll look at my lap delta like five or six times a lap. Yeah. And I have very set positions where I know where it is. And you see it moving like on a, on a circuit, I a, a, I guess there might be GPS issues with all the trees around the TT, so it might not work. 37 mile long lap, and you're literally that jolting that much. You can't, I've never, I get... Like, do you know if anyone that uses a lap delta? So they know that I, they're... I Because obviously, you want, how many pit boards do you get a lap? Me? Yeah. One. Do you? <laughs> In 18 minutes. Oh. 17. <laughs> 17. <laughs> Don't I'm me on the twin. No, nah. I'm uh, No, no, I'm going to do 120 mile an hour lap on a twin. What is that equated? Okay, I was just trying to dig out of a no, hole, no, no. all right. No, no, fair enough. No, no, but you're right. But that's it's like, such, that's like us a... getting a pit board with three laps to go. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're and right. And then nothing. No, no, you're right. It's like, I've never looked at, like, when I go short circuit racing, you just you just dig who in. Do, but, who uh, does your pit board, by the way? Oh, Stephen and Debbie at the top of, like, the, the gooseneck, and they're just going, mm-hmm. yeah. But I was going to say, you don't, you don't want to... Uh, upset them. But well, to be honest, <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather not. I'll tell you what the word, I'll tell you what this made me laugh. The first, like, when I won the classic TT... I got like seven pit boards on me last, right? I spent six oh, of those so moments, yeah. right? People kept sticking out number one. And I'm going, who the fuck's catching me? I kept looking over my shoulder going, where? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, I'm like that. And, I kept, like, and it was only in Stephen and Debbie. I had, I'm like, it's me. I'm lead. Like, I had no idea to the last lap. Me. No idea. Like, not a... Nothing. Do you, like, do you want where, to use this opportunity? Do you want more pit boards on the TT? There'll be no, loads of people that are willing to do it for you. No, There'll be I, all sorts getting stuck out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd rather have an offensive <laughs> sign. I swear my life. You know, the more signs of get on and get going, I prefer like motocross signs. Well, I, I did do I, hutchies and I did put boobs on it and that because I had to, you know, like the 80085. You just had to because I'd rather have it's the first thing you lo- learn at school and on your calculator is how to write boobs. <laughs> <laughs> so he got it. And disco, disco, disco on the in music. Lesson. I don't know that one. Yeah, you know. I'd rather have that. I tell you what, I would like to see if anyone is going to be at the TD. I'm that, and you know when you're just saying about biting the, you know, biting the screen and get going, the times go down. Mm-hmm. You know they don't, they don't get. Sorry, they they go slower. Up, yeah, they get slower. Yeah, that's the that is what I'm generally worried about this year. I'm a little bit too much screen biting. Time. Too much screen biting. Yeah. Actually, I am desperate for that one thirty. Mm-hmm. That and that's mad. We're talking about Hickman doing one thirty fives, thirty twos, thirty threes, and stuff like that. But if I see. The self-confidence thing's a little bit of an issue with me on the bike, but, you know, I want it that bad. I'm scared of not getting it. But if I did it, and when I don't, I'm going to be confident, you know, <laughs> well, when I do the 130, I generally believe I'll probably go faster because that is such a a pipe dream yeah. that I thought I'd It'll never get close you to. Yeah, and I just, mm-hmm. I think I'd never ever, when I first got on a bike, I thought I'll never ever do that. It wasn't even calculable but that i've got sat close to it now i'm generally shit scared if not and in what it's, it's like if i do it 
And if there's anyone listening that wants to stick a pit board out, just put a, a put a thumbs up, and that would be the happiest moment of my goddamn life. Man. If someone, if I cross that line and gone, it doesn't matter if it's the last lap of the senior or whatever, it's just bang, you've done it. Um, just speak, speaking of that, like landmark, I it'll, it'll, be, now. it'll be a huge thing. It'll be a huge thing to work towards. But like the, the no, really is it. the really is like like you don't have to do it at a certain year or a certain time like like you know like but then if... we're talking about that progression element and that's what's going because every year i've gone there i've gone quicker yeah numbers have got better and gone there and it's all about that psych a lot you know but i totally agree with you you know i'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to do it the first year back yeah, and stuff like just... that i don't have to mm-hmm. but mm. i really want to <laughs> yeah look look at you know like say um Bastanini or Grassini, the Grassini team, for example, like they probably dreamed of winning a GP race. And there's loads of times they'll have went faster, 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 then a big down and then back up and down and yeah. then up. And that's our sport and it's life in general. I think as sport well. and life's like that. And it's, it's, it is. it's, it's so difficult. So I think whenever you do achieve something, there's as, as sports people, you then all you ever do is then reset your goals and then you've got, you'll <laughs> yeah. go, I need 130. Well, you'll literally go past, I swear, you'll go past the line having done 130 and be like, Mint 131 next. You know, and that's just how quickly and how horrible it is. And then yeah. your, 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 like your, your expectations change in a heartbeat that you think you've made it when you do X and then Y turns up. You know, like yeah. that is just... I actually envy people who don't strive for certain things because I would love to be... Um, like fulfilled easily yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. do you know, it's, it's do you know the biggest life. the biggest uh example of that was when we we're speaking to james tosland and he was saying yeah like, i listened to that yeah, one it was so crazy. good and he was saying like is it he, like even though he's like world champion and all yeah. of the things he's done and in his amazing brother. his life he's like chasing like something that's kind of impossible yeah and he envies the fact his brother's like f- fulfilled by like sort of having a holiday going to the pub on a friday mm-hmm. like things really inter- like it's much deeper than just like a podcast or just things but it's um really interesting yeah like, i loved like all the psychology and that sort of yeah, stuff me too. And other things but uh, can i just tell you something hilarious <laughs> as we sat down you as we just pressed record you were like what on earth are we going to talk about we're like oh god here we go i don't uh, want to know the number i don't want to know the number. two hours 40 in no <laughs> and, uh, and you haven't changed back going. you must have good batteries in because normally the batteries die on know, that's well. it fresh batteries in but and he's got to go home and explain whose knickers they were doing <laughs> <Nick, like, you laughs> <know? laughs> jesus <laughs> where did you do but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah do you know what? i put really every time you come on i always enjoy it but uh particularly he is a co-host today. you know uh, don't, particularly yes, so i'm still waiting for the donger I'm, I'm still waiting i, <laughs> yeah. I say it every time is one of them things where you're like joking slash not joking <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're laughing now, going. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, no, I'm, I'm laughing nervously because I'm out the job here. They are. That's, <laughs> Herbert's an out in, in straight off the bat. No, thanks away. for having me back. It's it's mint crack. It's been good actually because we just chewed through everything, haven't we? Today it's been mint. Yes, yeah. there'll be always some because we end up leaving here again. Never mentioned that. Never mentioned that. <laughs> shy, 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 shy. Oh, but it's. Uh... We mentioned him earlier, but shout out to Matt. Matt Late. Hope he's uh, keeping well. And obviously, massive thank you to all of our patrons and to our sponsor, mm-hmm. Colchester Cowers. Zachy, and uh, have you got anything else to wrap things up, lads? No, I need to stop. To be fair, Rich, we, Rich we, Energy we is amazing. Oh, yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, <laughs> brand ambassador. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, congratulations, that, Dominic. Thank you very much. Very no, good. no, it's um, ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to be sponsored by an energy drink, and it's like everyone I used to knock around on my BMX with at the at the skate park, and that that's that's to you. See, I think more Taking... than a, more than a one thirty, you get an energy drink sponsor. You've made it way you have. more. That's you a one thirty five right there, straight it, hun- off the bat. A hundred percent. I will straight arm a made rich it. energy when when I do me one thirty. I'm gonna straight arm a one thirty like um a rich energy. Hundred percent. But uh, thank you for squeezing that in, and thank you for rich energy for letting me join the family. And uh, I'm obviously a love child between sugar and ADHD. I'm the perfect <laughs> perfect spokesman for it. I really am. Don't sleep. Till you're dead, kids. Simple as that. <laughs> but uh, no, yet again, thank you to our Patreon sponsors. Thank you, Christian. And uh, yeah, can't wait for the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Best of luck in Guadix, and I'll see you at the preseason testing. Chasing the racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki. Part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt, and Benelli motorcycles.